The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this black girl. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. Welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill, uh, episode 137. I had to uh, have a little think then, just for that split second. Daniel, I am Gav. Gav, I am Daniel. And we welcome you, audience, whoever you are. Welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill. That was more supposed to be a vampire, but it sounded more Nazi German. <laughs> uh, or Nazi vampire. Nazi vampire. Oh, we've never seen that in a film, have we? I don't know. Always, we always get the old Nazi zombies. We do. Look, everybody, we're back. It's been a bit of a pause, as as we've experienced over the last 10 years of podcasting. Sometimes a hiatus. But we're back. It's episode 137. We are back with a bang. Um, apologies. Apologies for having uh, about two months off, I think it was. Um, but we're back. We're back on schedule now. I, uh, we, I we have lost do, my voice, though, basically. Yeah, we couldn't do it because you, yeah, as you just said, no interrupts you you lost your voice so yeah. we couldn't do the podcast well we could have done but it would be like what did uh, I sound kind like, like do, the do audio, an impression it would be the audio like. version of having the invisible man on the podcast oh yeah what you what did you oh I can't remember it was I don't know I can't do an impression essentially dear sweet listeners um, I haven't been very well on and off for 18 months nothing serious it turns out um, just a series of unfortunate events like Lemony Snicket once said um, meaning that uh, I caught like a bad cough slash respiratory thing that meant uh, I was struggling to catch my breath for a couple of months and then I got some a steroid inhaler one of those sort of asthma inhaler things which sort of fixed everything but also took away my voice because I was pumping steroids down my throat so sod's law that i got better and then i lost my voice but then i stopped taking the inhaler and now oh, presto bob's your uncle fanny's your aunt i sound almost like i used to so we're back now and we thought you know what let's fucking record a fucking episode you fucks my godfather was uh, bob uh, so i used to call him uncle bob but i never had an aunt which i'd call aunt fanny bless my dear aunt fanny hmm um, but yeah, we are back again. Um, I hope you are all well in the world, uh, lovely people. We've missed you, and I hope you've missed us. Mm, I hope you haven't missed us. I don't want you to be sad. We do know. enjoy doing the old talking with each other, don't we? We do. Um, you know, it's always good to catch up. Although, obviously, we we don't just talk on, on the show. Imagine if the only times we ever spoke was when we recorded. Occasionally. Uh, well, no, because we text, I suppose. Yeah. But I mean, actually, verbally, like, with sound, yes. Um, uh, uh, occasionally, when we've podcasts close to each other, we would have been able to have done that. Mm. You know. mm. Well, this episode, yeah. as you probably know, because you clicked on it, this is our invisibility special. Um, so we're going to be talking about invisible things, and mm. specifically two films, Gavin, aren't we? The original Invisible Man, the Universal uh, movie, Black and White, which is just fucking incredible, and I can't wait to talk about it. And Nine, 90 years old now, that is. Excellent movie. Um, I hope it gets a real good 100-year fucking anniversary Blu-ray or whatever. Blu-ray, it's going to get a good one, isn't it? And what's the other one we're looking at there? Uh, Hollow Man with uh, Monsieur Bacon. Kevin Rapey Bacon. Uh, uh... As Dan likes to call him, the bacon wrap. Yeah, I do like the bacon sandwich. Um <laughs> Pigs so, in blankets. Yeah. So that's what we're covering. We'll be covering those. We'll get into those. We'll, we'll, we'll you call them my little pigs in blankets. Come here, my, come here, my little pigs in blankets. Poor old Kevin Bacon. I love him. He's a good guy, isn't he? Yeah, he's all right. He's all right. He's not too bad. Yeah, so uh, that's what we'll be discussing. Um, before we sort of get into 
news and updates and um, what we've been watching. We're not going to go through everything because obviously it's been a couple of months, but some of the more recent things. I would say Kevin Bacon, he is quite an ambassador of horror almost a little bit, like Nicolas Cage in a sense. Um, he's not afraid to uh, do a horror movie. He's made some good ones. Uh, I really liked... Um, Stir of Echoes. Stir of Echoes. I enjoy Stir of Echoes. I actually have that on uh, in the old collection. It's quite a tearjerker at the end. Yeah, it's not too bad because obviously it's about a young young lassie that's been killed. Well, we'll be discussing Bacon in great detail. Before we get into what we've been watching recently and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Uh, I wanted... We want to dedicate this episode. We do indeed. Um, It's difficult to to do this you know and talk about these things but um anybody in the podcast community knows that we recently lost uh, a really good friend of ours um a brother of ours boz yes um boz was and is a, an absolute legend is a wonderful man uh we w- had the pleasure of spending a weekend with him um, and we'll update you on how we're doing with the Star Wars Sanctuary Moon uh, in a moment. But we had the pleasure of spending the weekend with him in the woods, as you do. Uh, and celebrating his birthday. At, celebrating uh, his birthday. Midnight with a birthday cake in the pitch yes. black in the middle we, of the woods. Well, we wrapped, didn't we? Um, yeah. Just that... before midnight. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. And just as, as we were packing everything away, because it took about an hour to pack everything down, he... Uh, brought a cake out and said it's my birthday and it was just gone midnight so we all had a slice of cake yeah, Lavinia bless her brought out yeah. a cake yeah and we celebrated and we sang happy birthday in the middle of the woods it was <laughs> like if anyone walked past it'd been like a, some sort of like are they like uh, sacrificing uh, sheep or something what are they doing over there but but they're, they're cultists singing happy birthday is one of the cult members what's going on <laughs> and some of them are in stormtrooper outfits <laughs> um yeah so we will be dedicating this episode to Boz. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he, you know, I, I do count him as a friend. I met him about 10 years ago, same as you, Gav, and we Together, got to know him through him. podcasting. Um, At Fright Fest. Yes, indeed. He did the Little Pod of Horrors podcast, um, as well as appearing on as a guest on numerous podcast both in legion podcast network and outside he was always on duncan mcleish's show uh, the podcast under the stairs yep. um and everybody who met him loved him there is no question he had a, something special about him yeah he's such a positive person when i like i told you that story sort of uh, very quickly um just um indeed yeah mention of him um just a bit of fright fest and i was just in a bit of a sad place mentally a little bit and um i saw him and it just don't know what it was just it's like a little little ray of sunshine coming towards me and i was like oh boss and it was just so happy to see him and uh it, just because it's just he had that sort of a uh, uh, real happiness glow he's a very positive person just a very really incredible uh, person um you know he's the sort of person you could probably ring up at any point and he'd be like oh yeah i'll be there don't you worry you know absolutely you know and he proved that a million times over on the Star Wars weekend because he was a one man A team you know any (laughs) time we needed a branch cut down or something built or smoke grenades he knew and he knows how to do everything you know it's so weird I've never been making a film and someone's passed before the film was um, finished so um, and it's amazing because Boz actually set up the last scene at night time and it looks so good it does just and the film was going to be dedicated to him but just that he was so excited for everyone to see it so i'm so gutted that you won't see it but like it, it that is so good to be like boz did that and people be like man that looks good and be like that's what boz did you know i'm sure i'm sure most people listening to this uh, this podcast know who he is and if you don't go and check out his show um the little pod of horrors he actually stopped doing it uh, a few years back because just sporadically well, did boz loved to live in anything and everything he loved um you know, he loved his lightsabering. He was with the Silver Sabers Lightsabering Academy. He loved, um, which was like a form of Tai Chi and keep fit and lightsabering all, all mixed in. A fencing, because I think he did some fencing as well. Um, he was also uh, a, a, an ambassador for DDP Yoga, which is Diamond Dallas Page. Yes, the WWE, WWF wrestler, Diamond Dallas Page. Devil, yoga. Devil's Rejects, he's in that. He's Devil's Rejects as well. Yeah. You know, uh, the, this the guy literally lived every single moment to the to the fullest um and 
every, like I said, everybody who met him loved him. He was a, an amazing, like you said, Gab, he was a beacon of, of positivity. Um, every time you saw him or spoke to him, whether it was online or in person, you know, he was just nothing but love and positivity. There was not a negative bone in his body. We're all very shaken and, and sad that, to find out what happened. Um, and he's gone, but he will absolutely live on through the fact that he's done a billion podcasts for a start but also um just we'll always be talking about him and the way he he, he sort of lived his life and i personally and i know you gab as well and many of us will be try all try and be a little bit more boz from now on and um it's losing somebody like that, that <clears> makes <throat> you realize you should try and appreciate the things you've got because you never know what's around that corner so sorry to well we are only here second, guys, very but, very quickly we are only uh the way I look at it is uh, we're only kind of visitors to the planet for a little while, like we're on holiday. Indeed, yeah. Um, and that is it. We're not here for very long. And, you know, we're here and then we're gone. And it's, um, I think you kind of need to realise that best that you can and try and make the best of your life. I know it's hard to, I've always said this before, like if you're not in a good job, get out of it. I know you can't just do that, it's hard. But try to just do the things that make you happy. Don't worry about what other people think and want of you. Yeah. What, what a guy what a, what a good friend what a legend both in the podcasting community the horror community <laughs> fright fest i mean god he was the king of fright fest wasn't he you know it's just mm. it was just uh, in every he was involved in so many things so this episode definitely dedicated to boz we miss you boz we love you boz and, and, and star wars sanctuary moon star wars sanctuary moon will definitely be dedicated and um our thoughts go to, to his family and to his partner lavinia uh you know and <laughs> And that's that, really. So just a couple of uh, things to say, really, and that was it. But um, talking of Star Wars Sanctuary Moon, we want to make this right for him. So how is it coming on, Gavin? Uh, keep us up to date. Where are we at? Where are we at? I am balls deep right currently. There we go. Uh, well, not we currently, go. because that would be weird, because I can't do it at the same time. <laughs> but uh, I am pretty much balls deep in composing at the moment. Um we locked, locked the edit like we've finally got all the shots and we put all the edit together and we've gone that is the edit everybody's gone yeah okay cool okay cool okay cool you know everyone's had their can you move this can you move that or whatever you know and um, uh, that's all done uh, so then I can uh, write the music to the the frames and the edit itself um, a bit more tighter so that's what I'm doing I've almost written all the music um, I'm kind of stuck at the moment I was doing it earlier and I've been having a bit of a blockage with it Tomorrow I've got pretty much a day off. I'm just going to go straight in all day. Um, I've just got to write the end music for the last scene. A little bit of something else just before. But I bounce down all the songs I've been making, put it to the timeline and just watch it, see how the, all the songs go together, see how it all fits. And it's just like, man, that's really cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I'm really proud of, of everything you and, and we have all achieved so far on this. You know, we worked it's very so hard that weekend. I can't believe um, how long it's taken, though. If, if I didn't have any other work on and it literally could just focus on it, I could probably do it in not two weeks. But it's got to be right now, isn't it? And now, especially with Boss, we've to got to make time. it right for him yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, It's really hard <laughs> because it's a Star Wars film and it's a horror film. So you've got two very hardcore fan bases and Star Wars films. Production values are up the highest of all, all film productions. If you look at all films like Christopher Nolan's and all that stuff Star Wars could be up there in production value so we <laughs> us me in me and my bloody my little laptop have to make it look <laughs> like you know <laughs> like it like a fucking blockbuster it's looking fantastic so far though so I'm kind of happy with it I haven't got bored of it yet and I've seen it over and over and over and over yeah yeah same not well. I haven't seen it over and over, but, but I've seen it a couple of times. You've seen some less stages of it, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Um, well, that's where we're at with that. So that's very good. A couple of months. A couple of months to be done. Um, and obviously, it's been a while since we last sort of uh, show. But yeah, I've got yeah, a few yeah. things I wanted to talk about that I've watched. Is there anything that springs to mind for you? Have you done any cinema trips recently? No, I am going to do the indie one, which I know you you've going to uh, uh, talk about. I tell you what, though, what I enjoyed watching, uh, I picked up at a car boot sale recently. Um, I picked up the Cannibal Run one and the Cannibal yes, Run two on Jackie DVD. Chan, Burt Reynolds, I, I, Sammy Davis Jr. I remember as a kid watching them, being like, kind of like, eh, they were kind of all right. And, and that was my bread and butter as a kid. But they just seemed a bit, I don't know, because it's it cars and I don't know something that wasn't as appealing as maybe something else i don't know what um 
Watching this time around, I loved it. And I love the fact that Jackie Chan and Jaws from uh, the, uh, James Bond in, films. In part two, they are, aren't they? They're, they're, they're buddies. Again, yeah. Uh, I love the fact that they're ju- basically just driving an electric car with a sat-nav in it. Yep. That's essentially just what they're doing. Like, it's kind of what we're doing now. Except uh, they do the have fact, uh, invisibility Jaws, and shit. Jaws, Jaws, Richard Keel is his bodyguard, but it's Jackie Chan. So when these two get into a bar fight, you've got... A Jackie man who's Chan back just goes for it. At all, yeah. And you've also got Jackie Chan, so no one's going to win. These two walk into a bar, you're doomed. But I just really love it. Roger Moore's like plays Roger Moore, oh, but he's, he's basically good. playing James Bond. Like the music yeah. is dun 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 dun. dun. It just changes the notes a little bit yeah. of the music, and it and you go, do you not? Don't you know who I am? No, I'm Roger Moore, and then just get knocked out. Um, and Dom DeLuise is his laugh is so infectious. But you got Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise in the front pretending to drive an ambulance, and they just get, need to pick up a doctor. So he picks up this crazy doctor with like cross eyes. He just Jack keeps Ellen. injecting himself, drinking. Ah, oh, yeah, this is brilliant. It's so good. Yeah, he, uh, he keeps injecting himself with the uh, the morphine, and he's like, "You want some? No, thanks. You want some? No, thanks. Okay, I'm just gonna have a bit more." And he gives himself a little bit I, more. I, like, I kind of really enjoyed it. Um, Farrah Fawcett is absolutely stunning in it Adrian as well. Barbo, uh, oh man, the girls in that but Lamborghini. And Ooh. the second one, I didn't mind as well. That's okay. Yeah, the second one's pretty good as well. You know, um, um, I would, I would have even said to you at some point, maybe we could do Cannonball Run, but it just won't go in this move. We need to start another podcast. You know, I know, I know. Well, I'm glad, glad you enjoyed those. They are, like I said, I grew up on those, and um, and actually, I was into Bruce Lee uh, and some sort of movies like Big Trouble in Little China and, and Cannonball Run. And one day, my dad said, "Oh, you know that Jackie Chan does some other movies as well." And then I discovered that some other Jackie Chan movies from the rental store. And then, obviously, there was that very big Christmas in the UK where Channel 4 did a Jackie Chan season in the late 80s. And I recorded about five Jackie Chan films off I, the TV. I, I remember that. Yes, I do remember that. And they did uh, Meals on Wheels and lots of stuff Meals like on, It was Wheels on Meals, Police okay, Story, it? Project A, Dragons Forever, and Armour of God. And, man, those movies changed me. And then I met him. So, I know. Well, I, when I was watching it, I said to Elijah, I said, Dan's, Dan's had dinner, had lunch with him or whatever. Yeah, how funny. It's funny to think that, isn't it? Yeah, what do you mean? So I had to explain. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Well, that's good. Um, well, you've mentioned Indy. I'll, I will talk briefly about... I, I went briefly, to watch because it's so new, and even know, myself want to go watch it in a couple of weeks. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I had the pleasure of watching this only a couple of days ago. And I had the pleasure of watching this with our good friend, RJ McCready, as well. Um, came to visit me, and we spent the day together. Went to the cinema. Um, watched this together, holding hands. We were very excited. Felt a bit like I was cheating on you, Gav. Sorry about that. Um, and then we went for for a man date after. We had some dinner after as well, so that was lovely. But we really enjoyed it. I do, um, I do that with Mark, though, sometimes. I have little man dates to send Mark. So it's a bit, I cheat on you a little bit. That's all right. Well, you know, we've got a slightly open relationship. Um, but uh, what can I say? I really enjoyed it. And, you know, I think the main thing I want to say isn't really about the film. I enjoyed the film. It's great. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Obviously, this is all my opinion. Uh, it's, it's much better than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. It's on a par, in my opinion, with Last Crusade. I love that. Uh, and, and it's good. It's good stuff. It's good fun. It feels like... Um, James Mangold, the director, I feel like he's captured that Spielberg, George Lucas, Richard Donner, because there's some Goonies vibes to some of it. So that he, it feels like whatever he's done, he's captured, it, it captured that, that feel of magic that. Yeah, from yeah, yeah. the 80s. Yeah, it's got a uh, uh, family film, but an adventurous family film type. And there's like a bit of a, a golden sheen to it all. I don't know. I can't explain it. But when you see this, you'll understand. It's just got that. I will report back. So. Yeah. But what I want to say is slightly away from it, but related to it is it's really cool at the moment to really diss films before they've even come out the flash i went to see that everybody was oh this is going to be the this work is terrible critics hate it it's awful i fucking enjoyed it it was silly michael keaton is batman again blah 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 indiana jones this film is awful don't bother going to see it it's a one out of ten from me and actually everybody i know who's seen it just like the flash and a bunch of other movies really enjoyed it i don't know why the culture has flipped and that it's cool to hate on movies or especially big budget movies at the moment um marvel is getting 
everything they do, people hate. And I don't know why, because, okay, then they've probably never going to reach the giddy heights of Endgame and all the movies leading up to that. But the movies are still fun. I pay my money to be entertained. And nine times out of ten, I pick a film that I know is going to entertain me. It's a Marvel film, it's a horror film, it's an Indiana Jones film. And I always, I know what I'm going to get. I don't set my expect. I don't know what people's expectations are, but I just want to say, stop hating on films, especially before they've even come out. Just give them a chance. You know, don't, it, it, think, even people, it's just crazy. I, I think it's probably just more to it. I think it's just that um, that human nature of being able to... Uh, 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 roll people up or just get something going on and and behind a, a wall no one knows who you are exactly it's very easy to get that and then get, or get the, the dopamine from all the uh, likes and the comments coming back bing, bing, oh, bing, it's bing, social bing. media I'm Everyone, look at my phone. everyone's a critic now on social media like you said everyone's a keyboard warrior you know, if you go yeah. into the, the comment section of a, the review of a film, it's people, oh, mate, you think that's good. It's, you should watch this. I like, think it's more than just, just that. I think it's just, it's the hot property thing coming out. It's the, it could be the target to go for. It's like the bully in the school playground spotting the thing. And India Jones is the thing in the playground this time. They're going for that. Yeah. I don't think it's, I don't really think it'd be the movie as such. I think it's just the culture we live in nowadays. So you have to take it as a pinch of salt. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, um, good. And you enjoyed it. You enjoyed, that's the main thing. So fuck everyone else. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, and I, I, my wife hates this phrase, but I, I borrow this from Matt, who does his show with Kate, Eternal Sunshine of the Not So Spotless Mind. Uh, but Matt quite, quite often says, don't yuck someone's yum. And uh, 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 what, what, what context was that coming from? I'm, I'm going to steal that one because it, what he's essentially saying there is if someone's really enjoying something or if somebody had a really good time with a film or is enjoying something that they've eaten or whatever it is, don't say, oh, well, I think it's shit because there's no point. You might say, oh, I didn't have the same experience, but you don't need to really go in on them and say, no, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. That's a shit film. That's a shit <clears throat> chocolate bar you're eating. Just... We all have our own tastes, and we all like what we like. I like shitty shark movies. You don't, but I think they, you don't really, until you sort of grow a bit more mature as well, though, realise that you, you, no one gives a fuck what you say. Yeah. <laughs> and no, there's, there's no <laughs> point. It's just, you're just pissing in the wind. There's no point. This, this conversation is something definitely that uh, Boz would agree with, I think, because uh, he was, as we, as we said, he channeled positivity. Um, yeah, but he wouldn't, but he, yeah. well, we were going to be grumpier than he would have been because we're too grumpy old oh, men. Yeah, I, I, I'm, way, <laughs> I'm definitely more grumpier than Boz. But uh, <laughs> I'd like to think I like trying to have a positive outlook at all times. Most of the time. Another movie I saw at the cinema, uh, I didn't get a chance to talk about this when it came out because uh, I got ill just after I watched it. It was, well, actually, I was ill when I went to watch it. I feel sorry for the people that were in there because I was coughing so much. But I went to watch Evil Dead Rise. Yeah. Uh, which I know you weren't a fan of. No, uh, on a context, uh, text and hindsight from from watching it, didn't mind it. Don't mind it. I thought it was really, really good. I thought um, it was a brilliant horror film, and had some of the most intense scenes, like demonic scenes I've seen in a movie in years. Uh, but was also really captured that Sam Raimi manic camera angles yeah there was something about it i loved all the characters in it um yeah you know it just was again it was just i switched my brain off and i watched this film you know it's just i just enjoyed it evil dead rise i thought it's brilliant really loved it um and that got me to thinking i need to catch up on some horror movies that i haven't seen for a while and there's a couple that one that inspired me that you you'd watch you inspired me to watch which is freaky uh, with Vince Vaughn. Oh, Vince Vaughn. Now, this was good, wasn't it? This freaky movie. It's pretty good, isn't it? Fucking hell. I watched it. Alice said, now, my wife has got a big crush on Vince Vaughn. She likes a uh, very tall, and I don't know why, because I'm only five foot nine. She likes very tall, sort of big manly men. I don't know why she's married me. Um, Okay. So when I said to her, do you want to watch this Vince Vaughn movie? It's a bit like Freaky Friday, you know, those body swap movies, but 
it's like a horror movie as well like a twist and I, I think it's a comedy I said I don't know much about it but I know it's like he swaps bodies with a teenage girl and she was like yeah Vince Vaughn get it on get it on so put it on obviously it's fucking gory it's it's a real horror movie but it's in the same category as happy Bur- happy death day to me um uh final girls those sort of movies that take something like groundhog day or, or one of those sort of concepts but they put a horror twist on it so this is essentially vice versa or big those body swap movies freaky friday but instead of just a, ma- a dad and his son it's a serial killer played by six foot five vince vaughn and don't they do it well both of them he, and he plays a great teenage she's girl. like a 17 year old girl <laughs> it's so fucking he good. plays a great teenage girl but he when does. he snogs the guy in the car though you're like oh my god it's oh my incredible. god it's it's so funny but also really gory and there's not many kills in it but they are great but what's fantastic about it is us horror fans there's a ton of homages in it whether it's friday the 13th whether it's big there's even a big reference in it for people who are into that tom hanks movie i am one of them it's just a great film um and it's actually on uk netflix now if you've got netflix you can stream it freaky 2020 Vince Vaughn, it's fucking brilliant. Um, really loved it. And Gav, I know you watched... Who did you watch it with? You watched it with one of your kids. Jay. 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 Watched with Jay. Yeah, me and did Jay, Jay like said, it? Yeah, yeah, well, I said to Jay, I said, do you want to check out this film? Um, I said, I don't think it'd be that gore or anything. It'd probably be quite mild, because Jay kind of likes gore. You know. Yeah. Um, Jay's 16 now, you know. Um, in two years, they can go to Fright Fest with me, which would be weird. That's mental. I know. Really weird. Making me feel old. Anyway... Um, and as soon as it started, the first thing was like a decapitation or something like that. And I was just like, well, Jesus. And I, was, I didn't, I didn't, okay, it's a bit gory. She was, what could be gory? It is a bit, isn't she? I mean, there's a scene with a circular saw which made me wince a little bit, and I've seen a lot of horror films. Yeah, that's good. Um, I did check out a movie which you saw recently. It's not a horror movie, though. Uh, Sarah and I just fancied it on a Saturday night. It's like, we kind of we've been watching some various movies recently where we're like oh that's gonna be pretty good and certain uh, get to it like oh, for god's sake we even watched um, that french movie uh um motherfucker it's got a pink black title of pink of in pink with a girl with a gun on the front cover braise moi oh i don't think i've seen that fuck me it's it's called fuck braise moi it's fuck me essentially uh, in french. oh yes i've heard of that yeah <clears throat> it's basically porn it's just porn that's great um and bad acting shot on like just a camcorder uh it's really weird um watch that but yeah we've just been watching various movies and it's just like for fuck's sake these all these films are supposed to be i suppose we caught a risky movie or whatever and you watch this it's just boring nowadays we we watched something before we know what we're going to get we watched cliffhanger with uh sylvester yeah we rented out on prime and you'd watched it recently because i remember you saying on an episode um yeah, really enjoyed it. It's kind of exactly what you expect, really. But it's also really well done. You know, it was an action film a bit ahead of its time. Okay, it is Speed on a Mountain, it's, or Die Hard on a Mountain, but it's done really well, and the opening scene kind of like changes the whole movie. If they didn't have that bit where he loses his the girl at the, the opening scene, it'd be a different film. It'd just be a straightforward action film, but... As always, Stallone puts a little bit more... Um, there's a little something about Stallone's characters for the most part, where there's a, always a bit of backstory and a bit bit more meat to them, isn't there? Yeah, uh, there's one scene where he stands there. He looks like uh, John J. Rambo from the movies. Like, it's like a country house. He's just kind of standing there in a checkered like, shirt and tight jeans with boots on. You're like, it looks a bit like John J. Rambo. Like, uh, He's a fucking legend, Stallone. <clears throat> yeah, but watch that. But anyway, should we get onto the show? We we shall get onto the show, yes. I, I was just going to say, talking of Stallone, have you seen the trailer for Expendables 4? No, but he's. I know he's not really going to be in it so much. Or, oh, it? Well, no, he's in it a lot by the looks of the trailer. Oh, I thought he was actually taking a back seat, and it's like a new crew coming in. I mean, there's a lot of new people in there, but he he's in there as well. So, um, yeah, I will I will get on that. Okay, cool, cool. All right, yes, let's crack on with the show. So it's time to get invisible. Let's get ready, ready. Let's get ready, ready. Let's get ready, get invisible. invisible. Uh, so what I thought we'd do is before we we have our trailer for our first film because we're going to do this in order. So we're going to do. 
1933's Invisible Man first, but before we get to that... Do you get, do you get kind of, as a man, because you know what we're like, do you get kind of horny just wandering around being naked? Not like all the time, because like, if you walk into a library of all different ages, it'd be a bit weird. But I mean, if you were, say, walk, part, walk into a exotic club with ladies taking their clothes oh, off... I think you're probably going to get horny, yeah. But at the same time... Like we'll chat about the beginning of the Invisible Man. He's freezing cold. Cause he's walking through the snow. He's got nothing on. That shit Every, is, everything's going to shrivel up. Small. Right, we we'll get onto his cock and that soon. And your, your feet are going to be all sort of wet and blistered from the snow. But yeah, we'll get onto that. But before we do all of that, before we have our first trailer, let's talk about this genre, this subgenre, because there are a lot of Invisible Man women. John, John boys, Carpenter did the old memoirs, didn't he? He did indeed. Well, should we should we shoot through these very quickly? We'll talk about only a handful of them. Well, let's, um, let's, let's uh, uh, mention them as you go through them. Let's have a little little chit okay. chat. Well, we might as well start off with um, one from 2003, straight to video, called "The Erotic Adventures of the Invisible Man." What sort of film do you think that is, Gav? Softcore porn, but uh, a woman just going uh, uh, like like in the entity. Yeah, basically that's it. I saw how the entities affects. Have you seen the entity? Is that in your list by any chance? No. Okay, because that's ghosts. Uh, and, uh, the subject matter is fairly hard, hard, full on, really. Uh, yeah. Two ghosts Ghost rape, rape uh, a woman, but I saw the effects of how they did it. It's so impressive. Like they'd made a, a cast of uh, her body, and then underneath it, like have suction pads on the breast, so pulling them in, so it's like the hands are feeling the body because it's such a full on movie. It's so incredible those effects, though. So it's quite a, a a triggering film, though. Um, it is, uh, but I want to. I do want to do it, though. We do definitely need to do it because it's a conversation. Yeah, we could put that in. Oof, I, would I don't have, know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought it was really okay. on the list. Well, there's another one on the list here. Now, I've never seen this, but the synopsis alone makes me want to watch it. It's 1960. The Amazing Transparent Man. Oh, hey, I was going to watch it in a dinner. I've had fucking two months. This. Yeah. A crazy scientist invents an invisibility fa- formula. He it's plans to Milan, use the formula to create an army of invisible zombies. Holy... Yeah, I, I, I didn't watch it. Is, what's the one of Ray Milland? Oh, no, I'm no, not, I think of X-ray eyes. Yeah, the man with the X-ray eyes. No, yeah. it's not that one. No. Um, obviously, Hollow Man and Hollow Man 2. We're going to be covering Hollow Man I later on this episode. I have seen the second one. Christian Slater. Yeah. Takes the role of, uh, takes the place of Kevin Bacon. So there's that one as well. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that an Invisible Man movie has come out this year called Fear the Invisible Man. Now, I was very excited <laughs> when this uh, got announced because, you know, special effects, it's 2023. However, IMDb currently giving this 3.8. How can a movie from 90 years ago look so good with effects? I don't know. That we'll get on to that because those effects are r- ridiculously good. Mm. So, what else have we got? Invisible Agent. Now, this is from the Invisible Man series, um, as in series of films. The Invisible Man's grandson uses his, his formula to spy on Nazi Germany. This is from 1942. This is, this is probably the third or fourth movie in the series. Great. I love the fact that there is more and more of these. The Invisible Boy, The Invisible Avenger. Uh, what about this one, Gav? 2015. The Invisible Centrefolds. Well, that's going to be a shit magazine to buy, isn't it? It's just blank pages. <laughs> uh, a centrefold finds a way to winning a coveted Miss February slot that may lie in a professor's invisibility formula in this erotic fantasy. I might have to uh, check it out. I didn't know there were so many invisible porn films. <laughs> yeah, have we I mean, st- two. But... Have we just stumbled across a new subgenre of films? Yeah, crazy. Uh, the Invisible Kid from 1988. I used to rent this one out. We could probably... Uh, uh, no, no, no. We could probably do a buy, buy podcast, couldn't we? Just doing, like, uh, uh, softcore invisible <laughs> man movies. We could. <laughs> Uh, the Invisible Kid from 1988. A, a nerdy teenage scientist discovers a formula to become invisible and uses it to take revenge on all those who've wronged him, but also to spy on the girls in the shower room. <laughs> is, is this in the 80s? 88. I used to rent this a lot. <laughs> of course you Terrible. Don't. Absolutely terrible, really. 
Obviously, The Invisible Man, absolute classic, 1933. The Invisible Man Returns from 1940. Again, we need to mention the movie that came out. Uh, was it 2020, The Invisible Man, or 2021? Yeah, yeah. I, I watched that in prep for this, actually. And uh, in the cinema, I was a bit like, uh, watched it for this, I was a bit like, meh. I wasn't into it at all this time around. I'm a big fan of it, but I think it only works uh, the first time you watch it. Yeah, um, I, I think it's going to date itself in a sort of way, I think. It, it it's very tense uh, the first time you watch it because he could be anywhere. It's not really about the Invisible Man though. It's about her, and that's what it's a bit like. Well, it's a different approach, which is fine to do that. But I want to see the Invisible Fucking Man. But now, well, I can't because he's invisible. <laughs> no, you can't see him. Now there is this Japanese movie that came out in 1957 <clears throat> called The Invisible Man versus. The human fly. So basically, they've taken the fly. So you've just got a, a, probably <clears throat> a man in a fly costume, just the rest dancing by himself for fight sequences. A ruthless serial killer with a peculiar method of stalking, killing his victims, comes face to face with a police officer who can turn invisible. That's so cool. I love it. The fact he's like, right, what can I do while I stalk people? Oh, fucking, I can turn into like a fly. Is it a human fly, yeah? Yeah. A human fly, yeah. But, like, I'm, like, human height, but I've got, like, big fucking eyes, like, buzz around and shit. Oh, no, there's a cop. That's all right. It's just a cop. He's going to be scared of me. I'm like a big fly. Oh, my God, where's he gone? Where's he gone? I can't see him. Ah, uh, you're Nick, mate. Where are you? Where? Where's that coming from? What a crazier idea. And it's Japanese, and it's 1957, so it's going to be brilliant. Uh, Okay. The Invisible Man's Revenge, another one from 1944. Abba Costello meet uh, Frankenstein right at the end, and Abba Costello have got away from Frankenstein, just burning away on the dock, and they're, they're just in a boat rowing away, going, yeah, we got away, and then, they think, and then get, hear Vincent Price go, do you really think so? Ha, 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 and there's a cigarette being smoked. Yeah, I remember that. And, I remember they, the jump end of that. In, and they jump in and swim off, and he's by himself in the boat. Yeah. Uh, the Invisible Maniac from 1990. This is another porno. <laughs> I would have thought, though. An, an yeah. invisible scientist escapes from a mental asylum and teaches high school physics to teenage girls. What? <laughs> what is going on? What? what, 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 what say again? An invisible scientist escapes from a, an asylum and teaches high school physics to teenage girls there's loads of things you've got to break down though straight away like let's go back to his place of work what's going on there we've got like he's invisible so he's obviously done like, what we're going on what's happened in the visible man we're about to review tonight where he's it's already happened and he's invisible but he goes to get a get a job teaching invisible what does he not just chalk up on the thing and this is what we're going to learn today and they're just sort of watching some chalk go up and down. I guess he won't get away with the backboard. I don't think it's more. I think it's more about just them bending over things and getting rogered by someone invisible. How does he get the job? I don't know. I, I mean, it's nine to nine p to rent on on Prime, so I'll rent it and I'll let you know. I think this is good for you and I to get some research here. Well, should we watch it together? <laughs> good day, can we? <laughs> D. Wallace starred in Invisible Mom and Invisible Mom 2. Fuck me. Straight to video. Uh, awful films by all accounts. Both yeah, get th I've, 3 out of 10 on um, IMDb. I, I put in, uh, I'm putting money on it that uh, the small time I'm on this planet, I won't watch them, and uh, they, they were probably going to be bad. The Invisible Woman in 1940, an attractive model, volunteers as a guinea pig for an invisibility machine. Why? If, she's a, if she makes her money off of being hot, why be invisible? Are you saying that? Are you, are you being ugliest? Are you saying like, uh, just, we only doing I'm not it being for ugly ugliest, people? I'm not being ugliest at all. If you've got it, flaunt it. Don't hide it, but invisibility. Yeah. But then it could just be, so basically, it'd be like torture, wouldn't it? Really hot, naked woman. So, great, you're really hot, I can't see you. But like, you're naked. All right, well, let's move over to the uh, the eighties here, Gav. Two words for you, Steve Guttenberg. Uh, what did he do? The man who wasn't there. 
Who? The State Department finds egg-shaped devices with green fluid inside that makes them invisible if I you drink it. I don't know this one. Steve Guttenberg. Steve Guttenberg. Yeah. The hairy chest. There's one for the list. Talking of uh, comedians becoming invisible, you've already talked about this. Chevy Chase. Daryl Hannah. Memoirs. Sam Neill. Yeah. Man who was an invisible man, oh, John Carpenter. Yeah, and John Carpenter, yeah. I think he is having a payday. After a freak accident, the company executive turns completely invisible and then goes on the run and becomes hunted by the CIA whilst trying to cope with his new reality. Now, it's just kind of like, it, it seems to be the wrong people for the jobs. No offence, John Carpenter, for the movie, but don't know. And Chevy Chase, it's, I don't know, you know. I don't know what movie it's supposed to be. It's been a long time since I've seen it. I just don't know who it's trying to appeal to, really. I I don't like Chevy Chase very much, apart from um, Christmas Vacation. It it was a really weird film to come out. John Carpenter and Chevy Chase is not a good combo. Well, let's stick with John Carpenter, because Kurt Russell starred in a film from 1972, back when he was a Disney kid, called Now You See Him, Now You Don't very young man chemistry student invents a spray that makes him invisible and the crooks find out about it and plan to steal it it's very fun it's on disney plus have you seen it kurt russell you've seen it yeah so does he just if he just does one little spray on his foot does the rest of him whole go so he has to spray just his foot just his foot so he has to do the whole of him and it's quite good effects for 1972. Now, they made three of these films where he played the same character. He was basically like a really brainy science kid. In one of them, Kurt Russell becomes the strongest man in the world. In one of them, he becomes invisible. That's this one. And in one of them, he becomes the most intelligent man. Um, it's called The Computer War Tennis Shoes, that one, because he's got the brain of a, ten- of a computer. <laughs> good brain of a tennis ball. I was going to say brain of a tennis shoes or a tennis ball, whichever you choose. Um, but yes, uh, silly fun. If you like things like Bedknobs Broomsticks, you'd probably like that. Um, The Invisible Dead from 1970. Sounds right. An evil scientist creates a murderous, invisible ape man. Fucking yes. Don't know anyone that's in it. Gets 4.2 on IMDb, but it might be all right. Is Tor Johnson in it? No. Okay. And and neither is... um, Who's the guy from Hills Have Eyes? You know, ugly guy. Don't be like that. You know who I mean, though. Yeah, fucking Uji Maduji. Michael. Barrymore. Yeah. Not Michael Barrymore. Michael Barrymore. Barrymore. Bar- oh, Barrymore. <laughs> fucking hell. It's not oh, Michael what? Barry- okay, well, let's scroll down this, this list. Uh, what else have we got? We've got Invisible Dad. Um, uh, Invisible Dad. Ooh. Is it, uh, Invisible Dad, that's basically all dads, just like, where's Dad? <laughs> it's 3.1 <laughs> on IMDb. Where, so where's we'll... Dad? I think he's in the toilet again. <laughs> we'll skip over that one then. Um, and we've also got the last one on the list, Invisible Sue. Where's Dad? Could be like a really serious, like really sad drama, where it's like, Mummy, Mummy. Where's Dad? He's in the toilet having a shit. He went to the shop to get some newspapers. He'll be back soon. That was two days ago, Mother. Most of these are not very good by all accounts, but I would say there's probably about a dozen of these which are worth your time. You know what is worth your time, though, Gav? Me and you. Me and you, but also a universal film. Oof. Whenever we get to talk about a Hammer horror movie or a Universal horror movie, yeah. it's a good time. And our next one, ladies and gentlemen, is going yeah. to be a 90-year-old film now as we record this episode. One of the older of the films that we've reviewed. Hmm. Uh, and that is The Invisible Man from 1933. So, it's directed by the legend himself, James Whale. It's based on an H.G. Wells novel. Fucking hell, it's got Claude Rains in it. I am excited already. But let's have a trailer, Gav, and when we come back, we will talk about the man that is invisible, the invisible man. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right up to the top of his head, all round his ears, 
Laura's worried about Griffin. I had a terrible feeling last night. I felt he was in desperate trouble. He meddled in things men should leave alone. Not the slightest clue. That's where the clues are. He wasn't leaving anything to chance. There must be a way back. God knows there's a way back. Are you doing help? Only if they leave me alone. It's the stranger with the goggles. He's gone mad. You're crazy to know who I am, aren't you? All right, I'll show you. <laughs> Let me be a madness when you're peering through the keyholes and peeping through the curtains. And now you'll suffer for it. <laughs> but why? Why do it, Griffin? Just a scientific experiment at first, to do something no other man in the world had done. Suddenly I realized the power I held, the power to rule, to make the world corroborate my feet. You know who the Invisible Man is, Doctor. Where is Dr. Griffin? What's the good of concealing it? Oh, come and stay with us. Let's fight this thing out together. Police, quickly. The Invisible Man is in my house. He's mad. He's killed a man tonight. Believe me, as surely as the moon will set and the sun will rise, I shall kill you tomorrow night. The secret of invisibility lies there in my books. Don't you see what it means? Power. Power to walk into the gold vaults of the nations, into the secrets of kings, into the holy of holies. Power to make multitudes run squealing in terror at the touch of my little invisible finger. Even the moon's frightened of me. The whole world's frightened to death. I'll lay traps that even an invisible man can't pass. Keep your stations now. Watch the wall. Help! Help! He's here! He's here! <laughs> We go gathering nuts and me on a cold and frosty morning. Whoops! The Invisible Man from 1933. Uh, like the old Universal movies, only an hour and 11 minutes long. A scientist finds a way of becoming invisible, but in doing so, he becomes murderously insane. What oh, great synopsis. <laughs> murderously insane. Not just insane, Gav. Murderously. Insane. Put murderously in front of everything. Became murderously good at baking. <laughs> Jesus. <clears throat> um, this is directed by James Whale. We've discussed him once before. Um, he directed some absolute classics. I'll just very quickly read off half a dozen. Frankenstein. Uh, and to, to, to just very quickly say about the fact that he was gay, only reason I would say that, that nowadays is because of the day and age that that, that, that was. Uh, and making him movies in the very 30s. Very much, uh, <clears throat> probably only in a select little f- few people, I'm sure, knew. So, um, and been in the industry, you know. So, um, but, but but these things, the films that he made, I just want to say before you go and say the films, because then you can obviously get a way of knowing. Oh, okay, these films, he could inject his ness into it, his into gayness it. into it, his gayness, I suppose. Yes, <laughs> because because him, you there's know. some there's some stuff in the Invisible Man, you know. Um, we'll get into it, but uh, yeah, so he did Frankenstein. Uh, he did The Old Dark House, which I absolutely love, 1932. Obviously, The Invisible Man. He did Bride of Frankenstein, which we covered a few years back. Um, he's done uh, The Man in the Iron Mask, the original one from the 30s. Uh, James Whale was just a... Uh, he's up there with Terence Fisher when it comes to kind of those old school directors. We should do a fucking... We should have a... We should do an episode where it's those two versus each other. And bring oh. their best movies, like the best three films or something. Ooh. Six movies each. Yeah. Well, like you say, he he was he was up against it in the you know making movies in Hollywood in the thirties uh, as a gay guy, which we now know no one knew at the time really. And if they do, it was like you say, Gav in a very small circle. And there are some bits and there are some ways he sort of threads that into his. his That's movies. what I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely. But yeah, this is this is a good movie. This is H. G. Wells as well, the, the writer. You know, so you've got. H.G. Wells, though, very, very hesitant about uh, Universal making his film because they had previously made uh, a project of his and um, it, it wasn't what he 
wanted really uh, so he demanded respect that was literally the thing he, I, I demand respect that would have been what he said in a, a meeting or whatever um, and I think he possibly met Whale um, who um, uh, might have influenced him into letting it happen yeah, and he's done some great movies. Or well, not movies, he but novels and didn't stories. Like well, one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think a lot of people liked Whale. Um, he got the job done, and he made he made Universal Studios a lot of money. And he changed horror. He invented, uh, in some ways, he started horror genre, subgenres. You know, Frankenstein. That whole the way he did that made it you know and obviously it was based on a book but putting that on the screen was just in the 30s is crazy and like we said this movie it's 90 years old now 1933 um the special effects are just as if not better than some movies i've seen because when you use cgi we you know in 2023 we can see oh that's cgi whereas back then there was no cgi so I'm wondering how the fuck they did some of the effects in this, you know? And it's like, that looks amazing. That bit looks amazing. That bit looks amazing. So it's just how? great. Uh, well, when we, should we, when we go through the scenes, I can guess some of them, but... Well, no, oh, I could give you the method, because I actually looked it up, so it's not me going, oh, oh I, God, I know yeah, this. Yeah. Like, I'm, it'd be easier for me just telling you now rather than getting to another point. Um, so uh, the parts that were going to be invisible, uh, they would they were covered in black velvet and filmed. So like you know, uh, uh, so you're just filming the scene, but the things that could be invisible were all just black. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then um, then filmed it again, but a black velvet background. So they're just there, but everything else is black. Right, and then you can combine them with separate shots, um, and it sort of shows some invisible. It's it's a uh, yeah, clever. And then, there, clever then there's some then there's some clever tricks with probably string, fishing wire, things like that. The that bike make, looks so good. The bike yeah. looks amazing. Mm. Um, the bike looks really good. Now, I've, got and, this, I've got a Blu-ray box set of these, which you can pick up really cheaply. Uh, I'm gonna say if you're into that sort of thing, um, and uh, it looks looks fantastic. And Claude Rains is phenomenal in this. Now, you know, imagine taking this 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 role, and you're only going to appear in the final scene very briefly. Well, they uh, really struggled to find the perfect voice for this film uh, because all the people auditioning were like face people at this point mm. now because the talkies had come in for so it's established talkies now. And um, they really struggled to find out who could do the great, good voice. And apparently, um, James Well was in a screening room watching just a film which had just been screened, made by the studio. And um, it, uh, uh, Claude Rains was in it, and just really, really, it wasn't an American film either, but it's a really, really bad uh, acted film. Um, and he was acting really badly, but his voice was great. And uh, that's and so uh, James Well was like him, get get him. If it was the 80s or 90s, then Claude Rains would be doing, like, cartoon villains. You know, you could imagine him recording villains for a cartoon series in the 80s or 90s. He's got such a great voice for it. It's hilarious, though. This is his American debut. He is. And talking of hilarious, this film is fucking hilarious at oh, times. It's very, very lovely, dry humour. And that's what James Well injected into it. It's... um darkly comic darkly comic at times you know and this is a movie where an invisible man pushes a baby carriage over and laughs <laughs> and he's running off like the joker from the 1960s batman laughing out loud and it's like what is going on it's crazy it's so good it, you, and actually he's naked if you think about it this way he's naked running down the, down the middle of the town square but he's invisible <laughs> it's yeah. so good yeah, it's um, just it's just such a great movie. Just the fact that we start off like I was saying earlier, what bang straight into it? It's already happened, and he's fleed where it's happened. And he's you know, it's not like your yeah, Doctor Jekyll, and Mister Hyde, where we see the him go down under the counter then come back up with a hand. And, you know, yeah, this is already like you said, and I like that. I already like it when it's already established, well, and and very, we start off in the snow as well, which you know I very, know you like. 
the snow. Of course. Very funny, though, going back to the remake, and that's not really about the Invisible Man so much, but the effect it has on a, a woman and the domestic abuse and stuff that she suffers from, a relationship and stuff. Um, <clears throat> and that's really funny, because that's not really about a person finding the serum and ejecting it and that whole thing, like, say, like a sp- uh, the first of a Spider-Man movie. Do you know what I mean? It's not mm. got that whole thing going on there. It's just this other bit, totally, almost like like the new Evil Dead Rise movie. It's not really Evil Dead, it's just off here somewhere. It's really yeah. funny. It's not really that, that's the remake. and and But then the original isn't really that either. It's afterwards. It's in post of that happening and him fleeing, which is such a great idea. And it's just like straight away you're bang, straight into the action of it. It's almost like from Dust Till Dawn or something. Well, yeah, or it's like, you know, we pick up Lethal Weapon 2. They're already established as a couple, as a, you know, friends, as partners. We don't need the backstory. We're in, boom, done. And it's the same with this. We don't need the backstory. We don't care how he's become invisible. What we care about is he is invisible. He's on the run. He's traipsing through the snow. And, and you know, he, and we just go, stro- we just dropped, boom, straight into the middle of this. Uh, yeah, I love that. A whole, uh, like a village snow like it's a cold night sort of thing so this is a great movie and like these like I said earlier these universal films are like pretty short um, it's a great movie if you want to just uh, sit there and uh, just chuck on a movie to watch and Flo- Flora is um, intended to be Jack, Jack, Dr. Jack Griffin's intended to be Flora very beautiful very striking woman it's obviously in the 30s there's a certain look played by Gloria Stewart do you know who she is? no she went on to end up being in the Titanic. She was the old lady. Oh, yes. No, I in did James see- Cameron's Titanic. I did see this, yeah. How crazy is that? Yeah. Started her career off very early on in the 30s and ended up in uh, James Cameron's Titanic. as the old version of Kate Winslet. Um, incredible career. Incredible. Yeah. Very beautiful woman as well. Absolutely stunning. Would you? Uh, I would have done in the 30s if I had a time machine. What, at what point would you have stopped? I don't know. I, I didn't keep track of her. Okay, have a, have a little think and let us know next time. But I would go down on her Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <he spoke> bugs ahead! <laughs> Whatever that means. Um, right, let's crack on. So, great score. I'll just get that out of the way. But then it's a universal movie. Of course it is. So, Gav, as you said, we start off with a man in a hat and a coat. His face is covered and he's in the snow and he's heading. It's like a giallo or something. Just it the way is. He looks. Like, and he's smashing into a pub. Just bang, straight in there. Everyone looks round. Yeah. And it's full of people drinking and playing darts. And he just walks in. It's got... There's just this conversation. I just, I just eardrop conversation as I walk in. It would have thrown me if I'd been the invisible man walking in. The conversations. Did you hear about Miss Mrs. Mason's little willy getting stuck? Yeah, I did hear that. That that threw me. Yeah, but that's James Whale. He's putting in sneaky little things that he can sneak past the 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 Hollywood execs that him and his gay friends can have a giggle about because he's like, well, screw them because they're paying me. Isn't it, isn't it brilliant? I think it's brilliant. He's Love a fucking it. legend. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's Willie getting stuck. And then the scariest game of darts I've ever seen. Why is it scary? I can't remember now, but it was. Uh, there was a. Real, I think it was just the way it just started just throwing them nearly willy. Bang! Like, oh, and people were really close to the board. Like, there's no safety going on whatsoever here. And he's got goggles on as well, so he's completely covered from head to toe. Yeah, it um, looks so good. Everyone looks at him like, what the fuck? Who's this guy? Like, it's, a pro- it's like a snowstorm outside. Like, all the villagers are there. All the guys that live in that village are there. All the wives at home doing the, being with the kids. It's all that old fashionedness. The dudes are there getting drunk. Uh, Playing darts. T- trying to fill up the barmaid. You know, Playing dan- danger darts. And, um, and <laughs> then someone who should be in the bar is just fucking turned up. Who's this, who's this cunt? Who's he, this? Come, he comes straight up and he goes, I want a room and a room with a fire and I want it now. And she says, well, I don't think we've got any. And he's like, I think you have. Get one ready. Yeah. Just the way he's just like, what the, she's just like, okay. And it's just like, he's just like, it's that sort of thing. Like anyone else says, it's almost like, 
I know he speaks, whereas a Clint Eastwood and the man, man has no name film as a, the trilogy doesn't speak and stuff, but he, he commands a presence when he walks in places. People don't want to fuck because they don't know. It's the, the unknown entity. I think this is move on marks, definitely. You're like, do I fuck with this uh, person? Uh, or do we not fuck it? Even though he's been a bit cheeky to our barmaid who, like, you know, serves us. So oh, she's the landlady. So she's boots. actually own, she actually owns the bar, doesn't she? Um, she says she takes him upstairs. She says, "Can I take your hat and your coat?" He shouts, "No!" Okay, right, okay. She brings him some supper. Yeah. And uh, she says, "Oh, her reaction's amazing when he, he does oh, say no. no." By the way. Yeah, it is. She's absolutely stunned. She she drops him off his supper on a tray and then she leaves the room and then she says, oh, bloody hell, I forgot him. I've got the mustard. Better take that back in. She goes well, in the well, room. Well, he says he planned on staying a while as well. There is a little bit of a conversation. Um, there is. And he says, I don't, is there a key to the door? I don't, I don't want, I want to be left alone. Um, and uh, that's when she's like, oh, here's a key. And she goes downstairs and downstairs, they're already dis- discussing, who's that guy? What's he up to? What's, what's he, he up what's to? Going? What's going on? She says, I don't care. He's a paying customer. That's the main thing. And then she goes, oh, bloody, I, I've left, forgot the mustard. I better yeah. take that back up to him. And, that, that, like, don't do that. He could have been, uh, like, start bollock naked. Like, or, don't just walk straight back. I forgot your mustard. Like, no, woman. <laughs> like, do knock on the door. Well, she doesn't. And what does she see? Or is it, not is see? it like the two-second rule when you can pick something up very quickly off the floor and it's all right? There's no germs, it's two seconds. Is that the same principle? So, oh, I left five minutes... Uh, no, I left two minutes ago, your room. I can I'm come not, back in I, I, without yeah, having to knock because minutes. it's like I'm already here. Two minutes doesn't mean anything. When no, I'm in I can get a lot done in two minutes. So, like, is <laughs> that... I, I, I could probably be, I could probably be hot, uh, naked and hard. I could minutes. be halfway through a wank. I, I could be finished. <laughs> Hell. Is your mustard? Well, is your mustard? Um, it is my mustard. <laughs> um, well, she pops in back in the room and she is confronted with a little him. glimpse. He's unbandaging his head and he doesn't seem to have any kind of a mouth. There's like a bit. It looks so good. I put here effects are insane. Yeah. Yeah. Well, honestly, on Blu ray, uh, sometimes you know what it's like. Especially uh, uh, movies of the 80s when people have like, had fake casts and stuff done and, and uh, um, f- fake arms and whatnot. Sometimes you see it and you're like, ooh, that doesn't look good on Blu ray now. Where on VHS it looked fine. This, this fucking spot on. What's good about this as well is that when you see the bandages, you know, with the mouth hole and the eye holes, you can see inside. Like the back of, so let's say you're looking in the mouth hole or the eye hole, you can see the back inside of the bandaged head. So it, it just sells it, you know, that it's this 3D object that's got nothing in it, even though it's moving around. It's so good, so good. Anyway, she is obviously shocked by this. Um, she leaves the room. He's very unhappy. This is where he's sort of cross and demands, you know, that this door needs a lock on it. Anyway, next morning, and we cut to Flora, the lady from the Titanic, who is the Invisible Man's uh, intended to be. She is a bit concerned of where her lover is. She is, she, and her and her dad are sort of discussing it, you know, do you know where Jack is? Well, she knows that he went alone, he won't be alone to do an experiment. Mm. And basically, the, the, the poor fella has gone away because he's basically invisible so he's like i got to fucking sort this shit out i've got yeah. to find a serum to bring me back to normality because i can't live my life invisible because that would suck uh that would be really weird you know um yeah it, it, when he does his shit is his shit invisible I think they talk about. Could you this. play like really good tricks and leave it on doorsteps? It'd be like I, I can smell it, but I can't see it. Well, I think they talk about this, don't they? Because they, he talks about when he eats food. Yeah, he it, does. He does. You, yeah. can, you can see the food for a while, and then after after a few moments, when it's digested and, and absorbed into his body, then it becomes invisible. But if he was to eat, let's say I ate a hamburger in front of you, and I'm invisible. 
probably take about half an hour or so for my body to digest that down and break it down, or probably longer. What, so so that hamburger it? would just be floating in the middle of the room, melting away oh, until it vanishes. That'd be well gross. And then I, I don't. I think how good that be for like, uh, uh, people learning uh, med- medicine? I don't know about the poo thing because once it's broken down and your cells have broken it down and you put it back out, I don't think it would become visible. So I think you're right. I think your poo and your wee would, would be forever invisible. Be invisible. So you could just do shits everywhere and no one would know about it. But just like, it smells of shit everywhere, but there's nothing. You just have to, like, you have to get special shit-sniffing dogs trained Amazing. for invisible shit. Well, Jack, cutting back to Jack. So this is Jack Griffin, played by Claude Rains. That's we find out he's the Invisible Man. He's on the run. He's, you know, he, something's happened. And he says to himself, there must be, must be a way back. A way back. Uh, yeah, back and to what he means normality. by that is, yeah, exactly. Not back to the future. Visibility. Back to visibility. Um, back to visibility. He, yeah, that sounds he, awful. He, sh- he shouts at the, uh, the landlady again and scares him. And she goes downstairs he's, and says to... He, I know, the thing is, I guess, I guess he's just super, super angry all the time. Like, if he's masturbating, he's angry. You know, he is just angry all Why the is time. Why is he masturbating? He's well, I'm just saying, though, whatever he does, which should be pleasurable, and all I can think of if he's sitting in a hotel room must be, might be masturbation. I couldn't think of anything else. Even that, though, is furious and angry because it, she just says whatever to him. And he's just like, get out of here! Blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, I think he's just so obsessed with... <laughs> Uh, well, the reason uh, she the, goes in, in the there, zone of the reason she goes in there is because she says, "You've been here a week now. You haven't paid yet." Yeah, he's like, "I've told you to not interfere when I'm doing my science." And he's got all his science stuff set How up. He just, I think he's just so like a tunnel, tunnel vision that he doesn't think the bigger picture. It's like you're going to get thrown out. You can't continue. You need to pay them, and you know, even if you don't want to, you know. Well, she goes downstairs, landed, and she says to her husband, "Right, I've had enough of him." He keeps swearing and shouting at me. The husband don't really I want him want to out. Do it. He's just like, he's like, oh. Oh. He's, like no, he's a bit of a weirdo. I don't really want to go up there, to be honest. She's like, you've got to get him out. I, I, I feel, I feel for him. <laughs> so he goes up there and he says, "Look, we need you out of here," you know. And he's like, "Well, let me tell you something." And he's basically sir. turned this room into a full-blown fucking laboratory. Laboratory. Yeah. Um, it is, yeah. There's everything, some burners and everything everywhere. Yeah. But he says to him, "Look, what's happened is I've the, been the guy's like, what have you done to my room? Like, what have you done?" He's like, "Well, let me explain. I've been in a serious accident. All right, okay. That's why I'm wearing all this shit on my face. And there is a cure, but I need to be left alone to work in." He's like, "No, I'm really sorry. My wife wants you out. She's the boss." It's Can't not. Be- it's not that you're not irregular. I, do, do we know, listeners? Uh, any of you Airbnb people? Do you rent out your place? Do you sometimes have people come along and turn them into laboratories and say, "I had an accident. I'm trying to get my way back." It'd be like, <laughs> no, no, this is not correct. This isn't. No, this is not normal. Well, he attacks the landlord. Invisible man attacks the landlord again. It's not going to help the, the help help the cause, is it? He throws them down the stairs. <laughs> And uh, his wife says, right, get the police. Yeah. So um, the cops turn up and uh, they, they and a big mob and as well as some cops and they all head upstairs. Yeah. And uh, he says, leave me alone. Yeah. Uh, and then he, they say, right, that's it. We're going to come here. And he says, right, I'll show you. Yeah, he's like, all right, you fools. I'll show you, and I'll show you exactly what I am. And he's like, ah, ha, 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 ha. his laughter it's is so laugh. good. He turns, he takes off the bandages, and as he's unwrapping them, like I say, you can see the inside of the bandage through these effects. They're ninety years old. Uh, it's just incredible. Like you said, it is like the Joker laughing away, uh, and one of them says, "He's invisible." And then he strips off. He starts laughing as he's taking his trousers off. <laughs> you country bumpkins. <laughs> He says things like this. Uh, and then um, he says, don't you know, don't you know, an invisible man can rule the world. <laughs> they, they freak the fuck out. Though. They're like, get the fuck out of here. Shut the door and go downstairs. Go, what Wait, are we going to do? He strangles the cop. 
But they don't know what to do, and they're like, but then, like, we need to go back in there, because if he gets the rest of his clothes off, we'll never catch him. And not at any point are they like, what the shit? What's going on? they don't really question it, actually. They're just like, shit, he's invisible. They're like, right, he's going invisible. Quickly get him. Like, it's something they did last weekend, when, when, like, some, Frank got drunk, and went upstairs and got invisibled. Well, he runs out the door past them all, and he smashes up the pub. They Benny Hill round the room a little bit first. Yeah. Which was a nice, easy thing for them to do, because they've just got to run around a room or some well, strings, pull got, some glasses over and you've stuff. You've got to remember, no point, though, will you be negative, but like, oh, I wish the camera had moved a bit more, because that, because then it was just the camera she locks off on a tripod for a lot of the shots, and in a, a room, just like that, so running around the room, you know. Um so good though at no point do you go oh, i wish the camera moved more it it works it, it almost like stage plays these old universal films well because yeah exactly it's like because they sell it like yeah. they're on a yeah, stage there's no steady camps there's no you know big it's all about the actors really. and their performance yeah yeah yeah. That's the, and you don't you don't at any point be annoyed by that you love it because you're sitting there watching the whole big sc- uh, scope of like the, the 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 cabin in the snow and the trees next to it and stuff like that and him walking towards it it's yeah it's nice well, he smashes up the pub, like we say, he manages to escape, he jumps outside, and then he steals a bicycle, invisible, still invisible, with his na- naked bare ass crack on that bike seat. Yeah, but uh, I've seen, I've, I've driven past a naked uh, cycle race in a cycle run I've in, seen uh, that in Bristol. London. Yeah, they have that in Bristol. I, I, I was shocked. Uh, yeah, and um, uh, yeah, he opens up a window, but he misdirects them, doesn't he, by the window? He yeah. goes a different way. So he steals this bike and he starts cycling down to the town square, laughing again like the Joker. People are sort the, of like, the "What bike, the hell's going on?" The bike's incredible. You've got to it must be on. It must that. be on a track, I think. It's just so good. But it looks great. But it's on a track, I think, is the only way they could have done it. Uh, and then he crashes it and he jumps off of it and he kicks a baby's pram over. He causes mischief. Yeah. Um, there's chaos. Just chaos everywhere. And the cop calls back to the station and they're like, I think you've had a bit too much whiskey, Frank. I love the fact that a man on the radio, uh, uh, on the radio, it's just says like the, there's a disease has broken out where everyone's panicked about an invisible man. Kind of like this mass hysteria where everybody's gone like, oh my God, there's an invisible man. And they've all like caught it. I like that as an idea. That is cool. Yep. And what's good is we ha- we haven't had to bother with half an hour of him doing the experiment and going, Eureka, I've achieved it. It's invisibility. We're just straight into him already trying to cure it. So we've only got two stories we're dealing with now, which is this story we were discussing where he's running around this village naked, invisible. <clears throat> and now we cut back to his colleague, his fiance, and his, his future father-in-law who were like, well, we need to figure this out. And she's like, well, we, he kept talking about this flower from India, that it's a type of dye, but this dye, this colour, drain does it doesn't colour things, it drains the colour from things. So it's always quite clever. I'm guessing this is all H.G. Wells. And um, then they find the details of this chemical and they start reading about it and they're like, I think we should probably tell the police about this because it sounds like he's probably invisible, and on the run, probably a bit mental as well. So there's a little bit of stuff going on away from this village as well, which is quite, it's quite interesting. And mm. so basically his girlfriend is trying to find him. It's a bit Incredible Hulk. Do you know what I mean? Because you've got oh, this one, got this scientist, got, scientist got this thing. Done, yeah, 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 yeah. And then his girlfriend's and trying to... And they're both very angry. Very angry. Except thankfully the Incredible Hulk wasn't naked. Because I couldn't, I couldn't have dealt with that giant I bet green bottom. It could be like really small cook. That's probably why he's angry. <laughs> Don't look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. It's cold. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, enough of that. Uh, where were we? Oh yes. So later on, Jack sneaks into the doctor's house. Yeah. Um, and he hears news reports about the Invisible Man delusion, like you mentioned on the radio. And he speaks and he explains what's happened to this doctor. Doctor, Is it... I can't remember the doctor's name now. But he says to him, sit down. I love the fact that he puts um, a log on the fire. 
He does. And he says, sit down or I'll knock your brains out. Is it Dr. Kemp or Dr. Cranley? One of the doctors. Okay. So he says to him, sit down or I'll knock your brains Let's out. Let's go with Dr. Dre. Let me Dre. explain what's going on. So Dr. Dre says... Nothing, you idiots. Dr. Dre's dead. He's locked in my basement. Come on. Come on. Okay. Well, anyway, he sits down in this chair and he lights a cigarette. He says, look, you'll feel better if you can see me. I need you to fetch me some things. I need you to fetch me <laughs> some bandage, some pyjamas, a smoking jacket. Give me my smoking jacket, bitch. And he's like, okay. I'll go. He says, by the way. I'll strangle you if you try and run away. So violent. I'll knock your brains in if you don't sit down. I'll strangle you if you don't, if you try and run away. Well, that's the only thing you can do is punch. Really. Or strangle. Or strangle. But I mean, like, otherwise, I can't use a weapon at least. That's yeah, because you'd, you'd see the knife coming at How you. How bad it'd be like if anything he touched was invisible while he was touching it? Oh, shit, yeah. Well, the chief inspector starts investigating this this hoax and says, look, there's no evidence at the pub. There's nothing here. I think... But well, just think very it, quickly, just when he's with the guy, he's just like, uh, I need food and sleep. But before I have that, we must work. Like, I was just like, Jesus, chill out. Like He's literally just said, I need food and sleep. There's two, two things for me. If I haven't got that and I need that, I'm not going to start experimenting. And I need pyjamas, and I need smoking jacket, I need and I need smoking gloves. smoking jacket, pyjamas, some food, sit gloves by and the a fire, and, a and have a little nap. And I need some more of these cigarettes, please. I'm happy just doing that. I don't even smoke, but I would have a couple of fags next to the fire. Thanks. Well, it's Dr. Kemp it is, because he sits down with Dr. Kemp, and he says, look, I'm working on an antidote. This is what's happened. To this, But this drug, this drug has made me realise the power that the invisibility can give someone. The things I could achieve... But he says, I do need a partner in this. Will you be my partner in this? Come on. Basically, he says to him... What choice do I have? He says to him, you can be my partner in this. If you don't want to be my partner, I'll kill you. But I want you to help me with this. Also, it is we Dr. Might, Kemp. we're probably going to kill a few people along the way. Sorry yeah. about that. Uh, this basic- is the way it's going to be. Basically, uh, kind of like a gang, uh, I'm going to make you uh, now be a murderer... Um, and if you don't, you'll be murdered. And the doc- Dr. Kemp's like, uh, okay. And he says, great, go and get your car, because I need to go back to the pub he does, and get all my notes. He does touch his phone, though, doesn't he? Oh. does touch the phone. Does he, he doesn't make a phone call, though, does he? No. But he, uh, he says, let's go back to the pub. So they drive back to the village. Yeah, more cops have turned up as well. And they're questioning the villagers. And the villagers are going, well, I've seen him running around but here, the, I did. The chief, the chief is just like, like, fuck off, you lot. It's a hoax. This is a mass hysteria of a hoax. Yeah, he's, he's walked into a pub full of drunken old men. Who have said, like, the leprechauns will come in or something. Wow, the glasses all fell off the table. Yeah, I bet they fucking did, Bob. Did you trip over when you were drunk? No, no, no. Yeah, whatever. I, I would be the same, though. If you're, like, you're busy and you're sitting, pulled down to the pub for a bunch... Everyone in the pub reckons that they've seen an invisible person. Like, fuck off. Like, is this a, is it April Fool's Day, honestly? Well, Jack Smack sneaks into the, the room to get his notes. Um... And he says to the Dr. Kemp, wait by the window. I did think when he's in his dressing gown and a smoking jacket and all that stuff, the banjos, that would make a great uh, fancy dress costume. I thought the same thing. And I was thinking, the next Halloween party I go to, it's either going to be that or I still haven't done it yet, but I really want to do Michael in the sheet from Halloween with the glasses over the top. Well, three and a half years on 50. That sounds ridiculous. Um, uh, I'll have another fancy dress party. Great. I'll pick one of those. Mm. Maybe you... I'll just be the Invisible Man, but I'll just be naked. What were you going to be? Well, either the Invisible Man in the smoking jacket, bandages and gloves with a cigarette, or Michael in a sheet with the glasses over me from oh, Halloween yeah. 1. Because yeah. that, that is a good costume. Simple. It is simple. So he says to Dr. Kemp, you go and wait by the window of the pub. I'm going to sneak in. I'm going to get my journals and all my notes. And I'll drop them out the window. You catch them. Get back in the car. I'll run back around. 
and again if you run away i'll get i'll catch you and i'll kill you i'll just turn up because i'm invisible i'll just you won't know where i am and i'll kill you so there's no escape all right so do what i say dr kemp's like for fuck's sake i did i was just having a nice dinner in the evening and i've got this shit going on so he drops the books out um but he then jack decides invisible jack decides we'll smash up the pub he beats up the cops he gets back in the car and he says to kemp drive drive you fool is it so <laughs> so that's that's when in the car i love the fact where he says going to the car he's like can you put a towel on your seat because because his bottoms basically get uh, uh yep. cold but then you're like your shitty ass is gonna just be on my seat <laughs> Yeah, but then it's going to be on my towel. Jesus. It's going to be everywhere. Like, the whole time, it's just like, oh, you're in, like, your balls. It's just like, hanging. You're what, what if it's he in says, the summertime and they're sticking to your leather? Says to Dr. Kemp, <laughs> keep driving. I killed a stupid policeman. I smashed his head in, you know? <laughs> it's great, isn't it? It's so good. This guy is losing... It's like the fly, you know, any of these scientists, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, as the power start, you know, they're realizing with this power, I can do these things. Well, I love uh, earlier that I, I sampled it once for uh, some music I did, but um, when he says, um, uh, he says, like, he did a thousand experiments and then the wonderful day hmm. where he finds it, and then he's just like, um, the drugs I, uh, I took seemed to light up my brain. What was an experiment turned in, you know, turned into a power ego trip? And he's just sort of, it's the way he delivers his words is just like, ah, so good. Claude Rains is incredible. And like I said, he all this is like a voice acting role, really. I'm sure he was doing a lot of the stuff where he had the bandages and all that in fact he's probably doing it all but he only appears for the briefly in the very very final scene you know it's just it's great that he did it you know really great um, uh, and it's essentially he's, he's a terrorist yeah i guess he is a scientist terrorist yeah yeah so oh, that'll make a good new movie scientist terrorist yeah <sighs> scientist terrorist um he, the next, oh jesus i want you to understand something I was in Vietnam, okay? And I can take you guys out. Hang on a minute, you weigh 25 stone. Yeah, but I just said, my buddy double will come in in a moment and take you all out. That's literally every cigar movie for the last 10 years. I know, I've got a Blu-ray, still seen it, so I'm like, oh, it's in my jaw, I open up my jaw, and I'm like, oh, it's, it's a Steve cigar movie in here still. We've got to watch this. She's like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, we'll watch that one. I will kill you all. Um, so, the next day, the headline on the newspaper is "Invisible Man Slays Policeman." Great, that's a great headline. No, what, not one you expect to see. At what point are they? Because um, I've got to think where I am to where you are. Um, where they go comb the country for like twenty miles. Well, I'm at the bit now where Invisible Man Jack is explaining the rules to Doctor Kemp. He says to him, "I have to avoid rain." I have to avoid fog because I can be seen in these okay. situations. Um, this this is I, when he does the whole thing. The drug, dr drugs I took seem to line up my brain. That's he the explains whole it all time. to him. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He talks to him about digesting food. He says it, it can be seen, so I need to, um, you know, I need to let it digest before I can go out on my missions. Uh, and he says to him, uh, "Good night," and he goes to bed. That is, and then we do cut to uh, the police chief and that, and then say, so, like, we're basically going to comb the country for 20 mile radius. Uh, there's 100 men out tonight, and tomorrow night there will be 10,000 men. It's a lot of fucking police when he says that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I guess what they do, they probably just get a massive circle and just go basically like this. But it's pretty serious because they've got Scotland Yard involved at this point. Um, like I say, I, I think they would be looking at it as a terrorist incident. Well, they say, because it's not just police, they, that, that 10,000 people is volunteers and police. Uh, and yeah, you're right. They What they're going to do is, you know, they put the announcement out, lock your doors, lock your barns, lock your sheds, because this guy is invisible and he can get in and hide anywhere. Yeah, basically, everybody don't want to cause alarm, but there's a murderer about in the village. All right. What does he look like, Gav? Oh. 
That's the other thing. I don't want well, to cause no, them again. On. All I need to know, Gav, sorry, all I need to know is what to look out for. You said there's a murder right there. Well, this is the this is the other slight thing with this. Um, the yeah, murderer... Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Just a description, that's all I need. Well, unfortunately, you can't see them. They're invisible. What the fuck? So you've got an invisible murderer in the village, but but just lock your doors. But okay. Unless he's okay. already in. But what does he look like? So your anxiety levels are fucking going to be at 13. <laughs> yeah, because I've had my back door open all day. Ooh, have you Hello. now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's just me on a weekend. Anyone can come but, in my back but door. But your anxiety weekend. levels would be over the roof, and you'd be like, "Oh my it god, be, yeah. are they sitting here right now next to me watching Coronation?" This Street? is why. This is why the remake, the twenty twenty one or whichever it was, that one that came out, the James Wan was it, whoever it was, that one really got to me because no, there James, were scenes where there was James Wan's partner. Uh, in yeah. Crime. yeah. But whenever there was an empty room and she was in it, you're like, well, is he in this room? What the fuck? Where am I? And your eyes are looking around. There's one bit of the kitchen where I saw like a knife move ever so slightly. I was like, oh, fuck, he's in the kitchen! And it's, it's, it's done really well. It's done really well, I thought. But yeah. anyway, I digress. So, yes. And he's in bed right now. He is in bed. And there's a radio warning, uh, you, know, to, you know, anxiety levels through the roof, everybody, listen! <laughs> This is where he grabs the phone. Now you see. So he says, he calls he calls uh, Doctor Crawley and he says, "Look, Jack is here. He's upstairs asleep, I think, because he's invisible. I hope he's up there." And he says, "They say, all right. Well, look, here's what you got to do. Just keep him calm, keep him quiet. Just act like you haven't like everything's normal. Just keep going with everything he's telling you to do." And he's like, okay. And then he keeps looking around thinking, is he here? Can he hear what I'm saying? I don't know. It's really paranoid, paranoid, isn't it? You just don't know. Is he there? Is he listening? Yeah. Um, and then we get a montage of people out looking around the countryside, trying to catch him, feeling around bushes. Imagine that. You're feeling around. You just feel an invisible willy. Oh, got something, chief. Feeling around a bush and finding an invisible willy. We've all been there. Um, Kemp calls the cops at this point and Jack is suspicious of him and he says to him, get some sleep, you're going to need it when I need your help in the morning uh, but Flora and Dr Crawley arrive. From the window uh, Invisible Man sees, sees Flora mm. not the butter his, his girlfriend. He says I want to see Flora alone and they're like, I don't really know if it's a good idea and they're like, no, no, no I think this is probably a good idea, let her go so here's what we're going to do. We're going to just, you go and see him, and then when he goes to sleep, we'll chloroform him. We'll knock him out. Yeah. How are you, how are you going to do that? He's invisible. Well, no, if he's under a blanket, you go up, you put ropes. Hmm. Tie him up. I would have done that. You've thought about this already, haven't you? No, it just popped in my head then. Get a bit of bondage on his ass. Yeah. When in doubt, kink it out. Yeah. Uh, so... He speaks to Flora alone with her upstairs, and he says to her, look, I want to be a famous scientist. Yeah, he wanted to make money. He wanted to make money for them to have a nice life. He basically wasn't an arsehole. I think he might have occasionally moaned, might have let down the uh, the paper boy's tyres on his bike. You know. He might have pinched her bum while he's invisible when, when she's cooking in the kitchen. But he probably wasn't that bad a person, but now he's just super, super angry, and he's trying to do a good thing, and he's trying to say this to her, and she is, at the moment, the only thing that stops that rage. And she's probably the only and again, person this who can is, talk this to is, This is the Incredible Hulk. This is, you know, it's similar, similar to that. <laughs> Betty was anything that could ever calm him down. She says, my dad, I help you. He said, well, look, I just need to find a way back, and he, any way I can. He, he does say, your dad's a maggot to me, though. He does. That's a maggot to me. But wolf. He says, I'm, go I'm going to sell this formula. Just trying I'm to help you out here, you know. I'm going to sell this formula and I'm going to become more powerful than you can ever imagine. He's power mad, essentially. That is, yeah, the power has gone to his head. The cops show up. And he actually says, I shall defeat them. He goes outside and causes a bit of mischief, doesn't he? Pushes a man over a cliff. He does. Well, we get to that in a set. First of all, there's this cool scene where all the cops hold hands and they surround the house in a big ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they basically say, like, we're going to close the ring tighter and tighter. Oh. 
uh, around the house until you know and he, he can't get past but he does of course push past them um he says uh, as he leaves he says to dr kemp i shall kill you tomorrow at 10 o'clock mark my words 10 o'clock tomorrow night right. i will what kill was, you what's at 10 just, it's just got the power to do it. It's but power. then it's like, does, when it gets to like 8.30, he's sitting there at home going like, I could do it now. So I'll just have to see him wait because I said 10. But then he's going to be expecting But he's me. demonstrating the power that he's got over this, over I everyone. Yes. Right? And and it's good for the audience because it gives us a, a, a clock to work on. Yeah. So he goes out, he starts messing with those cops holding hands. He pushes their hats off. Then he gets past them. Uh, he puts on, he takes the trousers off of the washing line and puts them on himself. Um, and then he starts singing, here we go, gathering nuts in May, nuts in May, nuts in May, as he's skipping along in a pair of trousers. He's, I think, he, is I think he is a little bit schizo, you know. He scares an old lady. Um Kemp says, Dr. Kemp says, look, I want to be locked up tonight. I want to be locked up for my protection. Please lock me in a cell so he can't get to me. He said he's going to kill me at 10 o'clock tonight. And the cops then, they question Dr. Crawley. And they say, look, we'll be honest with you. We know who this is. This is Dr. Jack Griffin. He's my future son-in-law. <laughs> Basically, you know, as you worked out, he's a scientist who is now invisible. And, uh... Yeah, it's all a bit, um, it's all a bit fucked. So we probably should help you take this guy down. So Jack wanders along, he th- throws some people off a cliff. It's getting worse. He's not just kicking babies over in prams. He's yeah. throwing people off cliffs. D- d- derails a train. He derails a fucking train, Gav. He pulls the lever on the tracks, so the train. It's a gets full derailed. on terrorist. You can't laugh. That's a lot of people he's killed. I know. I know. You're just laughing away. He steals, he steals some money, and then he throws it up into the, the crowd in the street. <laughs> there you go, you fools. I like that. Uh, I didn't... It's just that it literally just... Uh, I lost my, like, w- want for him to to win when he derailed a train full of yeah, people. You, you don't like him anymore. And then it's announced, you know, so far he estimates he's killed 120 people because that train derailment plus everybody else it's around about 100 so fucking hell in only about four hours he's killed 120 people we need to catch this guy so they come up with this plan like they get a massive chain in a room they can see if they get him in a room and just walk across one room to the other from one side with his chain like a big net yeah. and t- to catch him which is I get like yeah if you're in a room with the net that, that fits and I guess it's the bit it's a bit it's not might not work well they they tell dr kemp basically you're going to be the bait because it's you that he wants to kill at 10 o'clock so you wait here and then when he shows up which you know i'm sure we'll catch him using our net don't worry about it it's all good we know what we're doing and they're going to use the paint where are all the coppers going to hide well they they have some paint guns as well don't they right um and they put earth on top of the wall like some soil so that if he climbs the wall they can see it move um and they also disguise Dr. Kemp as a policeman as well. So they've got a lot of um, ways to kind of like protect him and try and catch you Jack could, as well. You could pretend it's not Invisible Man. And it's like uh, if you took like, the voice of it out, you could just pretend it's like a paranormal entity or a poltergeist. Ooh. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? I'd love to be a ghost. Not, I wouldn't like to be dead, but, you know, haunting people and fucking shit up. It'd be great. Go yeah. back all the people that have bullied you in life. You could just go back and just fuck them up. Good. I think I think we uh, need to get on the couch, have a little chat. You know, derail a few trains. What? Sorry. Um, he, they, they manage to smuggle Doctor Kemp out dressed as a policeman, and he gets in his car, and then he sits in the car, and in the back seat, you just hear, "I told you I was going to kill you at ten o'clock tonight, didn't I? <laughs> I thought you were going to escape." Like, what the fuck? Uh, okay, cool. Um, right, yeah. We could keep an eye on you, Dr. Kemp, but don't worry about it. Before 10 o'clock, just go off a couple of people. We're yeah. just going to be here with everybody, focused here, even though he's coming after you. But don't worry about it. He can't be with you. It's fine. He strangles just him. Just leave not- him there. What? Just leave him there in a circle amongst the police. While he's strangling him, he says to him, as promised. <laughs> yeah. um, and then he drives him to a hill. And he just lets the car go over the cliff, going, <laughs> and he kills him. And then he sneaks into a barn. But, Gav, 
Farmer the weather finds changes. him. Well, the weather changes as well. It starts snowing. Yeah, it does. So he's cold. He's fucked. And there's footprints. It's too cold. And they say, the cops say, it's too cold for him now. He would die of cold. Yeah. The do- One of the farmers says, oh, there's some breathing in my barn. Some what? Some breathing in my barn. You've heard breathing in your barn. Okay, Farmer Giles. But on this occasion, because we are looking for an invisible man. Did he say, it's a, is that actually a reference to having uh, uh, poo-poo problems? Breathing in my barn. There's a breathing in my barn when I sit down to go to the toilet. Oh, could be. I don't really know. But, um, so they get, so what do they do? They surround the, the barn, barn, don't they? They set it on fire. It, it's pretty dark, really. Fucking you know. hell, He's derailed a train. A derailed, the, the barn derailed of a train and then setting a, 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 a. I'm surprised that he didn't uh, rape someone. In hindsight, frankly. in hindsight, kicking a baby over in a pram is quite yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, we, it's this. getting there, but that's just a, a baby trauma. And that's not death of multiple people. So they set the barn on the fire. They see the footsteps coming out the barn again. To be really fair, good effect. He, he's earned being set on fire in such a horrible way. Really, yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he kind of escapes, but um, we see his footsteps. Yeah, yeah. how does he escape, for God's sake? And they shoot him, bang. And we see a body hit, you know, an invisible body. And again, great effect, hit the snow, boom. Um, and there's um, a hospital dying. Yeah, we cut to the final scene, which is, they're talking about him. You know, he, he hasn't got long left. Flora, if you want to go in, um, you can go and speak to him. He hasn't got long left. He will become visible as he dies. Um so you will get to see him very briefly. So she goes in and she sees him and, and he we finally see Claude Rains just for a few moments. And essentially just says, sorry about that. <laughs> She's like, what? What did you say? Sorry, I was a bit of a dick when I for the last few days. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, but yeah sorry. Uh, it's kind of like the way Wales done it it's, it's kind of like Frankenstein as well Frankenstein's monster that is they both didn't want these things to happen to him it's experiments um and they didn't want it to happen to him and they're both just there living a, a, an unwanted life as monsters yeah um and also, there's probably something to be said for feeling unseen or invisible as a gay man in Hollywood in the early part of last century. Mm. So he would have thrown that in there as well. Or sorry, made sorry f- for my squeaky stool. Or made to feel like a monster because of who, you know, who you're attracted to as well. Um, there's a lot of subtext to this if you really want it. But ultimately, this is a scientist corrupted by their power movie uh you know that's what we've got here there isn't really much redemption other than the fact he gets to finally see flora in the last final scene um but he doesn't deserve her he doesn't deserve anything he deserves to die because of what he's done and he does and he does die and that's and the end of it really he's just uh uh the drug of power oh, uh, took him and he yeah he, he just wanted that fix again and there probably is some drug uh, context in this as well, you know. I'm sure there was a lot of drugs kicking around during any of them. Um, oh, yeah. But, yeah. But it, this is... Pills. This is... This is one of my... This is in my top three universal films of all time. Universal horror films of all time. What's your, what's your top three? Frankenstein is my number one. Then this. And then probably Bride of Frankenstein. So all well movies. Or, yeah, they are. I quite like Dracula as well, but I think maybe maybe Bride is my number three. So, yeah, you're right. Or Whale. He's yeah, my man Frank, when it comes to Frankenstein, Frank definitely. Uh, yeah, Invisible Man, yeah. Uh, first one. I mean, you've it's got, like, Gilly, Dracula. You've got Blue Lagoon, you know. Oh, God, it's, no, it, it's going to be Wolfman. Sorry. Yeah, Wolfman's great as well. Yeah, I got the Legacy recently, the DVD Wolfman Legacy, and you can get all of those characters, individual Legacy box sets you can pick up. Mm, mm. Um, uh, yeah, and it's quite cool. They're just different ones. Some of them are not that good, you know, but it's just nice to have movies. And I just like, there's not enough werewolf movies. Um, so we should make Indeed. a werewolf movie. An invisible werewolf movie. Yeah, I'm still into the idea That'd of the last cheap. podcast I did uh, with Sarah. Another one released 
this one, the one before, uh, where I came, I was like, that's like an amazing story. I'm up for that one. Which one? Uh, the woman's being stalked. Oh, but, but no one was there. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, well, what we could do is we could make an invisible werewolf movie, and then every time he transforms into a werewolf, cheap, he turns invisible. Costume. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, and then you just shoot in a, a room. There's a werewolf, where? The, the wolf, werewolf! <laughs> Nice knockers! <laughs> well, that was The Invisible Man from 1933. Look, this is a phenomenal piece of filmmaking. It's 90 years old. The effects still hold up. Um, it's hands down the best Invisible Man or woman or kid or whatever movie. Mom, dad, it, dog. It's still the best film see. and it's the original and it's 90 years old, people. Get your fucking eyeballs all over it, this. You can watch it for free in a lot of places or you can go out and spend money to rent it or you can watch, buy it on Blu-ray. Watch a high-def copy, it's worth yeah. it. Um, yeah. If you haven't seen this movie, watch this film. Honestly, it's a great movie and it's, well, hour and ten minutes. Hour and eleven minutes, and it's funny because it's the Universal Monsters, but he's not really a, a supernatural, but he's a scientist, you know, like Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde, that kind of thing. I suppose Frankenstein is, is science as well. So yeah, it's great. It's really great. Um, yeah, check it out. Oh, talking of invisible, who's this? Who's just walked in here? Hello, Bill. I haven't seen you for ages. Well, he's not very invisible though, is he? All right, Bill. Well, no, he's not invisible. What is what is that you've got there? Is that a birthday cake? What's in it, though? You can't tell me because it's. I have to taste it because it's invisible. Not sure about this, but it's in a weird shape. I'm not eating that. Bill Murray, we have missed you. You've come here with an invisible birthday cake in the shape of a knob, by the looks of it. That's just weird. And uh, that okay. creaming as well. Well, while you're here, Bill, I guess it's probably a good time for you to take us into uh, some word of the strange. Yeah. Uh, do you want to? Gav, do you want to take it away? You ready? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Bill, can you give us the, uh, the the shit, please? No, not that shit. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. World, world, I oh, love it. I love that we've been doing that for many episodes. We don't even know why we do it, we just do. Right. Thank you, Bill, for that, as always, and thank you for your cake. It tastes a bit salty, I'm not going to lie. Um, I can't see it because it's invisible. But, Big salted uh, cakes, Bill. Mm. Well, I've got, I got uh, a couple of stories here. Uh, and then a very important question at the end to round out Word of the Strange for this episode, Gav. So, uh, first one is completely unrelated to anything. First story. Anything on this show, anyway, that this topic. But here's the headline, and then I'll read through the story with you. Six people killed by killer bees... Routine clan. ...after a bus crashes into a group of hives in Nicaragua... How many people died? Six. Whoa! Killer bees! Yeah. Killer bees on the swarm. Woo! Turn! Woo! Turn! <laughs> literally, well, it just, wasn't, it literally wasn't watching the programme today, the season, yeah, it's good season three. It's I good. have skipped a few episodes, but it's just weird, like, stories with them in costumes, and the whole episode's just kind of weird. I skip those ones. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so six people, sadly including an eight-year-old girl, died after That's they were attacked by killer bees after a bus crash. So the bus crashed, then Don't they were attacked. Could you? Like of uh, of of car incidents worldwide, like with animals mixed in, mixed in like a little cocktail. Yeah. Like killer bees. It's not going to be many. Where, like, the cars come off the road, it's just gone into a swarm of killer bees. It's killed people from that. Well, about 60 passengers were on board the bus. You wouldn't think that in the morning when you went on to get on a bus. Hopefully well, there's not you... a car crash. Well, yeah, that's not, the first thing you don't hopefully, want. Hopefully there's not a swarm of killer bees. So, the bus, containing around 60 passengers veered off the road and crashed into some bushes, into some jungle, just slightly down a bank. So quite a bad crash. 
to start mm. off with. Mm. But unfortunately, it crashed into a section of the ravine where they were keeping African honeybees, killer bees. Is that because their honey is like really uh, worth loads of money or something? It is indeed. But so they're also fucking like deadly. Really good. Is it like a drug, hallucinogen? I don't think so. Okay, there is something like that, which is one. Um, right. That's not good. So, 45 of the 60 passengers were stung by these bees. Even just and, one, like, even if you don't die, it's not going to be good. No, it really hurts. Um, they, as they crawled out of the bus. So the bus crash smashed, you know, into loads of jungle. And then as you're starting to climb out, you hear this and then suddenly these sort of one inch long killer bees each of them thousands of them swarm fuck that <laughs> I knew you'd, I knew your reaction would be good for this story um, local people local village ran to help the victims uh, and then a fire department turned up as well and staff in the Ministry of Health arrived who, dealt, who knew how to deal with the, the stings. Apparently there are photos circulating which show some of the survivors covered in some of them up to hundreds on one person of huge red welts all over their bodies. Do, what do you do? Do you put them all in line to like, I got one sting in my arse cheek to like fat 12 in my face? I can't open my eyes. Yeah, is that line? There's yeah. ones that stung the inside of my throat, I'm dying. One's up my arse. <laughs> like, John, I saw, you put that out there. I fairly, saw you put that out there, though, John. That's fairly high up, though. Um, <laughs> uh, it was initially reported that only four people had died after they were stung, but two more died after being taken to hospital. Um, 14 other people were seriously injured in the incident, and as I said, 45 out of the 60 received stings. Um there's a four-year-old boy still in hospital in serious condition. African honeybees are typically more defensive and quicker to react and chase people, and they chase people for up to five miles. Unlike other bees, that will just chase you for a few feet. They will chase you down. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, they're fucking like tigers. <laughs> they're coming after you. Little tiger bees. Um. About a thousand people have been reported killed in, you know, since reporting medical history from <coughs> African honeybees, killer bees. Okay. But yeah, that's that's the story of the bus that crashed into a jungle, and then realised we haven't just crashed into a jungle; we crashed through some hives of African killer bees. Yeah, that's fucked. Yeah. There's no sting in that tail. It's just that, that's all it is. Yes. I've only been stung by a, a wasp once. Yeah, I've been st the odd sting here now. I'm not bothered by a, a flying insects. I've never been stung by a bee. I know people do get very fussed by flying insects. The shit don't bother me. Just fucking. It's, it, it, you got to remember they're not interested really in you. <laughs> no, I, I just sort of unless I just you ignore start them. making them care. Yeah, it's especially like wasps. Sort of like, yeah, whatever. I just what, wasps it. actually. Wasps actually will sting you. You know. I, I'll have the odd time I'll have the wasp sort of land on my hand. I don't go. Oh, I'll just go. Okay, cool. You know, if you get sting me, sting me. Like, fair play. <laughs> I've only um, been stung once, like but I say. generally it happens, and they just go off again because they're like they're not bothered. They're like, oh, this is not interesting. Off we go. Yeah, I don't want humans. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go. Well, let's move on to some invisibility technology. All right, is this like Piers Brosnan's car in that Bond movie? No, it's better than that. Because <laughs> this is real. Well, there's lots of different technologies out there, but basically I thought we could just have a chat about it. There's an invisible tank that uses fiber optic cameras to project what's on the other side of it to the, the other side. So it looks like, you know, as it's driving past two blue cars, actually it looks like those two blue cars are on the other side of it if you're stood at a particular so, angle. Uh, the only way I can figure that is that the screens on the cars and it's filming the other way, going the other way, and projecting it onto 
the other side. That's all I can think is going on. I don't understand it. <laughs> There's like tiny millions of, well, not millions, but thousands of cameras. Doing what, though? Filming what's on one side of the tank. So let's say you're driving along, and on the right-hand side of you, there's two blue cars. Yeah. Well, the tank will film those cars and then project it onto the left side of the tank. So that's what I was saying. There, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. So that that it's not it's not great technology, but it's how they start. You know, it's what they're thinking about with different ways. So I'm just looking at some different ways that they're trying to figure out invisibility here. That's one of them. There's a lot of invisibility cloaks as well. Um, and there is some of them that are quite effective, and you can YouTube these. There's one that's like, it's just got this reflective light repellent stuff on it, and you put it on, and you can, it's a bit like the Predator, you can see there's someone there, but I guess if you were up in the sky in a helicopter or a plane, you wouldn't see that person, or if you were a bit further away. It's quite clever, some of it. Futuristic camo. Yeah, it's, that's what it is, you know. Um, Nothing like where you drink, a, you know, a serum and you go invisible. There's some really good stuff with shields, where they've got these big shields that are completely reflective. There's, there's a really good one. It's called a quantum stealth cloak, um, and it's produced by Canada. And it's just this big square, but if you're stood behind it, you can't see you. It's really good, but you can see what's, you can see the wall behind you, but not you. And I don't, I don't know how it works. You know, there's a lot to read up on it if you wanted to, but they use broadband and things like that. It's we should get them um, and do high high jinks. High jinks. Yeah, and mischief. Okay, we can do. We can um, film ourselves in the local park, just being there and going, Whoa, or just like talking to people. And they'll be looking around. Where, where, where's that voice coming from? They reckon in about. <laughs> They reckon in about the next 10 years, we will have cracked something that is close to what you see in films. Um, but the, the, my favourite one on the list, um, which is quite cool and kind of ties in with time travel, is the Time Cloak. Okay. Um, so the Time Cloak basically involves splitting time and speeding up so the object you point your whatever device at you simultaneously speed it up and slow it down at the same time so that it it doesn't exist you can't see it in either time um and they're using a time lens to do this and it's all being worked on by a college in uh i think it's in new york so say it uh, again <laughs> break it down very quickly sorry sorry just quickly just what they're doing again yeah, so um, basically the length of time of the object is masked by a time so small and minute that there's a long way to go before we even see it. So you're basically slowing down and speeding up an object or the atoms of an object at the same time. Well, that, that's essentially what uh, space though, isn't it? We can't see from millions of years ago. We can still see it. And billions years ago, but, but this is more theoretical at this moment. Yeah, you okay. know they're, they're 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 thinking about it. But essentially, what the, the main way that they can do things with invisible stuff is by bending light, using mirrors, fiber optics, and cameras, um, and different materials. I, hope, I really hope. I don't know if we will because I still think this whole thing things a simulation. I still do. I still do. Christ. But I really, goes. I love it though. In our lifetime, I don't think we will, because I just don't think anyone will ever do it. But we see a breakthrough of the most craziest thing. Do you know what I mean? The most craziest thing. People what, what learn to fly. Be? Humans learn to fly. Humans learn to go invisible. That sort of thing. Humans learn to fly. What with, with just, that backpacks? Just they can just fly. I don't know. They learn to levitate for their minds. I don't know. But we see like saying like the craziest oh, no. shit. You know. That'd what about cool. if like a guy like but um, it would break it it would break it would break the normality and that's not the plan of the uh, simulation I think it's just just, just carry on yes. what about if a guy mates with a a giant American eagle and the, the eagle has a an egg and it hatches out and it's a baby with wings and then that do you think that can where does this come from oh you said the is craziest thing is this spontaneous thing. or is this at night yeah, time when, when you can't sleep 
No, no, this is... This Alice is, this is like, what are you thinking about? I'm not telling you. Thinking about fucking an eagle, Alice, actually. I'm thinking about... What, what if it's a little man eat? What if I could have a little myself as a little... Coming out of an egg? Imagine like, a little baby little would be Dan, born out of an egg. Little baby Dan Eagle. They're like, oh, he's got little wings uh, and little clawed feet. I'm Dan. Yeah. Eddie the Eagle. Give me a worm. Um... Yeah, what about that? What do you think about that? That's pretty crazy. Eddie the Eagle. Yeah, that's what you'd call him. I don't know what I don't know what even I was talking about. I was just going to be completely derailed by a little egg man, egg hawk you thing. Give it some worms. It's just really disturbing. And I'm going to have nightmares tonight. What? What? Where? What, I don't know what we're talking about. Well, we're talking about invisibility. But the last thing then, because this is one of the strange and. Yeah. Um, is if you could be invisible for a day, Gav, mm. what would you do? When when this occurred, well, have I got a period of exactly twenty four hours? You've got twenty four hours. When this occurs, do, do, uh, do I have a choice of when I can say I'm ready? Yeah, yeah. So, so I'll say so, right when when I'm ready. When you're ready, I'm going to inject you with this. But you, so you have to come with me. And we're going to have to get on a plane. I want to go to Area Fifty One. Fucking hell. That means I've got to be invisible as well, then. Me and you, we're going to go on a little adventure into Area 51 and see what actually is going on. I like you. I like your thinking there. Do you like that? That's what yeah, we should so do. We'd, we'd, fly, we'd fly over to Arizona, mm -hmm. get off the plane, yeah. get up near where, um, How you know, cool, the, gate, though, where the gates are. How cool, go in there. But do you reckon they've got some mad sensors that are going they to still sensors? They would see us. There'd be a, an alien There'd in there called heat. Jeff. There's going to be heat uh, uh, sensors. There'd be an alien in there called Jeff, and he'd be like, oh. guys, just to let you know, there's two invisible humans that have just walked in, all right? That's the thing, though. It's still... I can see them. But then again, they can't do anything. They can't. We're not actually there when they come into the room, so we still could get away with it, hopefully, but... They'll see us. The predator heat vision, do you know what I mean? Then what if they put us in like a cell with aliens? That's the thing, actually. The real thing is, you could see an invisible person like the predator because that heat vision is real. You know, that's we, what I'm police saying. use They'd it with helicopters. A uh, yeah, heat signature. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Turn around. It's so it's it is flawed, unfortunately. Yeah, it is. What you need to do is wear a suit. Have a suit that not only. It makes you invisible, but also cools your body temperature down so that you you, you don't have a body temperature. You're cool. Yeah. That's where you need to be doing, isn't it? Mm. I I think if I was invisible for a day, I think I'd probably first thing is go to a bank and steal a load of money. But you know, it's a bank. It's gonna be insured. No one's gonna be harmed. I'm literally just gonna sneakily take. Uh, they they're gonna see bags though going through like floating through the air. So I'd have to do <laughs> uh, uh, maybe night time. I don't know. Um, but I would probably steal some money which didn't harm anybody which was insured and people got it back uh, enough just to live on and then, I'll, then I'll be like right I could have do some mischief where I could just go around just doing cause some mischief or yeah. or like say Area 51 type thing I don't really want to be a, like a, a, a hero right I'm going to go and film some politicians doing strange politician stuff that they do I don't Gav Gav's quote it's too much I don't really want to be a hero I don't want to be a hero even though the anagram of my name is Vagina Hero yep I think that's incredible and I think that's the only reason I've been friends with you as long as I have and I think not enough people know that Vagina Hero everybody it's the only anagram comes out and from he my is. name he is as well I can confirm he is how, how can you confirm this I've been told have you now <laughs> Oh yeah, I've been sent some. Uh... Anyway, um, <laughs> um you're right, right. Uh, yes. That's what you do. You'd either rob a bank or go around causing mischief. No, I would rob a but bank. Number one is Area Fifty One. Uh, uh, I think rob a bank and then say Area Fifty One would be good because then I could get the money quickly to fly over to Area Fifty One. Actually, mm. okay. But then I'd be invisible while I'm flying over, so that'd be a bit weird. Fantastic. Yeah, strange. Wow. World of the strange. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like that. I like that very much, and I think that's probably what I'd do as well. I can't think of anything better than that, really, other than you know, if I was if I was me when I was twelve, of course I'd sneak around 
the girls' locker room at, at school. But um, I'm it's 2023, and I'm a 45 year old dad. I wouldn't be doing any of that now. So what, there's nothing more I would do than steal money. Yeah, uh, I'd steal if I was invisible. I don't think. I don't think the love. The first thing you do is man go. Oh great, yeah, I'm gonna go look at someone get naked. Like yeah, because because the internet I, now I can do that online. I had this conversation with Sarah, and she's like, "Well, yeah, but that's because you're you." Because I said I wouldn't do that, and she's like, "That's you, you." But like many men would, and I was like, "I guess they would," but at the same time, it's kind of a bit like it's still you. You know what you're doing. It's still like really like creepy and dark and, and weird. <laughs> Hmm. I think I would like to spy, maybe, on people. I don't know what. You know, maybe I would like to find out what, like, for example, my work colleagues might think of me. Or That's, or a, my... boor- that's a really negative, boring thing to do with your invisibility powers, isn't it? Oh, I'm going to go to Brian's house and see if he's talking about me. But, but what else would you do, you know? It's not... What else would you do? You're invisible. You can do anything you I want. I think. I do. You know what? I honestly think I'd do. I'd. I just think I'd pretend to be a ghost. I'd literally fuck fuck people up by scaring them by flipping things out of like. I'd go in a shop and knock loads of stuff over and be like, <laughs> and then like run out of the shop and then you know. I don't know. I'd, I'd I don't know. Someone. There isn't a lot you can do. I'm just thinking about. It. There isn't a lot you can do. Really. But people people would pull out their camera phone and be like. That footage would go online, and you, when you were visible the next day, you'd be like, <laughs> Do you know what I would probably do? If it was an invisibility which lasted quite a long time, I'd probably start up my own production company, sort of stunt, like a stunt company, and be like, You can hire me for your ghost movies, and I can just move shit all around. <laughs> or we could we could shoot a short film in 24 hours. Be well good. If, if, if I said to you, right, next month we're going to do this, you, you can up, right, get a green, can bang green a script outfit, out. though, a green screen outfit and do that, you know. I know, but this but would yes, look really but good. Yes, it would be very good. Any, anyway. Well, that's that. That's invisibility. Bill, what would you do? Right. Well, thankfully, the listeners can't hear you. <laughs> I don't think they should hear that. <laughs> you are cancelled, my friend. Jesus Christ. Well, you better take us out of here and take that out of here as well, please. Thank you very much. It's take a, it away. It's like reenacting that Dan Aykroyd scene in Ghostbusters, but I don't know. Right, anyway, the ghost one, you know. <laughs> Blimey. Right, um, uh, let's get out of here. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Strange. Next week, though, give me Ira. Careless pets. Weird. Good morning, sir. Team's in earlier today. Something special going on? Sorry, Ed. You know the rules. If we're gonna move forward, this is the next logical step. I'm ready for you. Are you sure? Positive. There goes nothing. Sebastian? Are you in here? So, what's it like being a ghost? Ghost or dead? I'm very much alive. The question is, what would you do if you knew you couldn't be seen? You trust your eyes. Why did you have to go out in public? You have no idea what it's like. The power of it, the freedom. It's amazing what you can do when you don't have to look at yourself in the mirror anymore. Okay, Sebastian, fun's over. Tell us where you are. Sorry, Linda. You'll never be sure again. anywhere there's more to fear than you can see
You have no idea how much fun this is. Hello, man. From the year 2000. Sounds really Paul. futuristic when you say that. To the I year know. 2000. Directed by Paul Verhoeven. Robocop. Total recall. Yeah, we've covered a couple of his movies. Uh, starring Kevin Bacon Sandwich, Elizabeth Pair of Shoes, and Josh I'm from the Goonies Brolin. A brilliant scientist discovery renders him invisible, but transforms him into an omnipotent, dangerous megalomaniac. I'm glad you're doing that one. <laughs> omnipotent and megalomaniac in the same... I know, I would have been right with it. And he got a 5.8 out of 10. Yeah, now, I have got a huge soft spot for this movie, Gav. It's... Uh, I saw it at the cinema and I was blown away by it, you know. And like we talked about, you know, with the, the previous movie, although it's a lot of CGI in this, I think they it's used in a very good way. Um, this was right at the point of CGI, you know, it's 2000, so this would have been shot in probably 99. But I think only because you know it's CGI can you see that, but I think for the majority, some of the effects are very good in this. Um, but the way that the thing, the people and the gorillas do disappear, you know, they by layer by layer by layer, and down to their nervous system, to their skeleton. Yeah, it's not, it's not too bad. It, you know, it does. Yeah, you know, obviously it's digital effects, um, but it's okay. But oh. you can kind of forgive it um, because you know it's just it's good and they do a great thing like a different thing to the bandages because it's 2000 they do that dark man thing where he's got the silicone skin on him like he did in dark man you know um and it's a different look and it's a sinister look because of the eyes you know and the mouth doesn't really move but you can still see it's kevin bacon and i think kevin bacon is a very underrated actor um he can turn his hand to anything and I think he's wonderful in this, but also very rapey. You're not going to start talking about his package again. I mean, when that bit comes up, perhaps. But, uh, 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 he is just terrible. He is cancelled. Yeah, he's worse than uh, Claude Rains' character. He, he's worse than Weinstein at this point. Because he, he's not just kicking babies over and derailing trains. He's <clears throat> sneaking into his neighbour's house, feeling her up. You know, potentially raping her. Yeah. yeah. It's not good. No. Um, and even the stuff he does to his ex-girlfriend, which we'll get to, you know, it's like, wow, okay, dude, Jesus. So, yeah, Paul Verhoeven, we've uh, we've covered him before, like we say. Uh, a great score in this, very spooky, sinister score in this one as well. And we start, we kick this film off with just a, a rat just running along through a, a little rat maze. Nice little rat. Just la 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 la. I'm a rat. I'm a little rat. A little run. Something grabs it. Something's uh, grabbed me. Bites it. It's invisible. Chews it up, and it's a dog. Pretty good effects of an invisible dog eating this rat. Is it a dog? I don't know. It just looks like a predator type thing. Cat, dog, whatever it is. Could be Kevin Bacon. I thought it was the actual gor- gorilla. No, I think it's a dog. I right. think they're experimenting on um, a cat or a dog. Uh, and then straight away cut to Kevin Bacon Pervin. He's on his 90s PC. And uh, he's looking at formulas. He's figuring out, i just got to work out this formula for this um, invisible... Oh, hang on a minute. Is that my neighbour next door, naked? Let's just have a little look at that then. Establishing a character straight away here. Straight uh, away. Uh, 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 a sexual deviant. Within seconds, we've established A, he's a workaholic. B, he's a pervert. Yep. We know what we're getting. Now, his neighbour is played by Rona Mitra. Yeah? Yeah. I've met her. Have you? Yeah. Why? Because when Tomb Raider came out, on the PlayStation. It might have been Tomb Raider 2, but I'm sure it's Tomb Raider 1. She was the live-action Lara Croft that they sent to all the Virgin megastores and all the sort of shops to promote the film. Because she looked, you know, 
she looked like Lara Croft she, and they dressed her as that and she went around posing and you could have your picture taken with her and buy the game and all that kind of stuff and she, I, I can't remember which shop it was now but she was at this shop and I ended up meeting her there and I, I don't think I got a photo with her I'd have it if I did but I definitely met her and um, she was in FHM magazine she was like she was the it girl she's British she was the sort of the girl in modeling for a little bit just because of the whole connection to tomb raider but yeah weirdly i met her so there we go that's my little connection to this film just thought i'd mention that cool you know there's not much else to tell uh, i was a, a young spotty man i thought there was gonna be more story like then she looked at me and I, I happened to be single at the time and she said do you want to get a drink afterwards we got a drink and then you know i, did, I haven't told anybody this but she pegged me fucking hell <laughs> With an invisible strap on. Yeah. No, sadly, none of that happened. But um, there's still time, Kev. There's still time for that. I guess. So anyway, Kevin is uh, he, spying on his neighbour. Uh, I love the fact that the, the chemical compound that he's working on on his computer is exactly the same and same director. is exactly the same as the synthetic coke in Robocop. Is it? Yeah. I didn't realise that. It's the same graphics with the exact same like formula. Well, he manages to stabilise the formula on screen. So he video calls Elizabeth Shue, his uh, ex-girlfriend, but also his colleague. They have totally high-definition video messaging. Very good video messaging from 2000. Like like better than... uh, uh, Better than what we've uh, got right now. Yeah. (laughs) Um, He calls her. She's in bed with someone. And he's like who's that behind you in the bed? She's like, don't worry about it. And he's like, well, no, it's, you know, you're obviously moving on from me. You're just wondering who you're shagging. Well, little does he know, it's his other colleague, Josh Brolin. It's a goonie. So we've got a bit of a three-way triangle going on here, haven't we? Very good. I like this. Um, and it kind of adds to some tension that's going to pop back up later on. Suspense. So he says to you, know, I think I've... Um, cracked it i think i've cracked this meet me at the lab get the crew to the lab now so he goes there there's the invisible monkey that's there you know and uh there's a there's an invisible gorilla in there as well i do like the paul verhoeven really loves his really long drawn out shots of uh uh, long straight lines because i love my lines i I adore lines he does a lot of like looking up at buildings for quite a long period of time and like uh, elevator shafts Stuff like that is it's exactly the same as Robocop with lots of these shots as well. There is indeed, you're right. I've not really ever thought of that before. Mm. Um, so that basically, um, everybody, the, the plot here is they are working on an invisible formula, obviously. And they've cracked it. They can do it with some animals, but it tends to send a lot of the animals that they inject it with. They're a little bit crazy. It makes them uh, angry. It makes them violent. Some of that is to do with the fact that you don't have eyelids, so you can't sleep properly. Fuck because, that shit! You know, because, you know... Uh, I and would of course, be uh, so grumpy. You know, so there's that. You can also... You have no sense of your own space, awareness of, like, where you are and where your feet are, where you're walking. So, you know, for a, a primitive animal uh, with, with not much intelligence, it's going to drive them crazy. So their goal is to try and get this formula right so that it a it doesn't kill something when they inject it into it b it doesn't drive it crazy or violent c can we get this to work on a human can we get the approval from the science board to test this on a human as well so this is all the kind of things that they're thinking of really and kevin bacon is the brilliant scientist at the head of this department his ex-girlfriend elizabeth shoe works there josh brolin is the other great scientist he's banging elizabeth shoe and then we got a bunch of other scientists thrown in the mix as well. Uh, and uh, Kevin Bacon used to bang Elizabeth Shoe. He did. He used to bang Bacon Shoe. So Bacon Shoe bang bang. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it makes me chuckle. Now, pop on the invisible, uh, the Red infrared goggles. goggles. Yeah, so we can see the. Uh, oh, there's your gorilla. Oh shit! The gorilla's escaped, Gav. Great. So, what, what's what we've got then? What we're looking out for? It's an invisible gorilla. Oh, okay, not like a rabbit. No, a fucking twenty-five stone 
moody, unhappy gorilla. Is really depressed. annoyed gorilla that's invisible and doesn't have spatial awareness. Except they say, well, the problem is she's been gone too long. In other words, she's been invisible too long. She's really aggressive. Um, so Kev says, for fuck's sake. I'll get the tranquilizer gun. So Kevin Bacon grabs the tranquilizer gun, and um, he says, "We got to, we got to put her to sleep. It's the only way we can do this, really." Um, so they they track this gorilla down. I think she bites someone in the arm, quite nasty, um, and they manage to um, put her to sleep. And they manage to using the formula. They managed that he's come up with because what he was trying to do is work out a, a good way to reverse the formula as well. They managed to bring her back, don't they? Yeah. Um, so uh, him cracking it is that him cracking it for this gorilla? It's not actually for him. No, but at it some implies, point he wants to test it on himself. It implies because, it was for him, though, didn't it? Yeah, because basically he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to test it. He was. I think he all along he was going to test it on himself, but he doesn't want to do that until he's cracked. How they can definitely bring you back? So they've moved up the chain to gorillas. Yeah. So they inject the gorilla um, to bring it back. And that's what you think he's cracked. He thinks he's brought the serum, basically. He's basically got a bit of a god complex here, and he, he injects the gorilla, and we see its nervous system, then we see its heart, and Coming it all back. starts sort of appearing, then the bones. But then, we have a cardiac arrest. She has a heart attack. Um, so they manage to save the gorilla, thankfully, and they, they give it, you know, um, it was, heart massage, etc. It was a really good way of showing the uh, blood being injected into the, the bloodstream, and explain what was going on visually, it was great. Yeah, and, and even like you see in the heart, Slot, you know, slightly tacky effects, but only slightly. But um, even when they do like the um, the uh, pads, you know, the paddles, clear, you know, you see the heart go boom, expand, and you know, it just looks yeah, okay, it's a bit dated, but it still for me still works. Um, they celebrate, you know, they're very happy that they've, um, they they've done that. They stabilise the gorilla. Yeah, so they go. Die. They go for some dinner and drinks. I think the gorilla's like, what the fuck is going oh. on? Poor old gorilla. But at least it's... A, at least it's like, right, see you later. We'll just leave you in your cell. Just by yourself going, the fuck? Kill- We're all going out for dinner and drinks Please now. Please kill me now. So they um, they go out for dinner and drinks. And- I like the fact he says, oh, maybe we should cut up her brain. So oh, I'm only joking, but he's not joking at all. He no, no, he's definitely, brain. he's definitely going to chop her up the next day. Oh, he's such a bastard. So his power, he's really good here, Kevin Bacon, at demonstrating how, what a nasty piece of work he is. You know, he's, he's a he's, bastard. He's got this God complex. And then we, when we're in the restaurant, the next thing we see is he's talking to Elizabeth Shue. And he's and, trying it on, isn't he? And he's saying, like, you know, why did we break up? You know, and he tries to kiss her. She's like, uh, uh-uh, no, 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 no. And he's like, oh. I think I don't think you mean that, <laughs> and it's really rapey. He's basically saying you don't really have a choice here. I'm going to give you a kiss, and she she stands her ground. And she says, "No, absolutely not. You're not going to kiss me." So he goes back to the lab, and uh, he pets the invisible dog in there. The shoes on the other foot. What do you mean? Oh, the shoes on the other foot. I got you now. That is my shoe. Very good. The power. I like that. That was good. Um, so he, pre- he presents to the board all of their findings the next day and he says right <coughs> we just need some more time and they're like well we've given you a lot of time a lot of money I'm not sure how much longer we can we can push this really and they're all looking at each other going why hasn't he told them that we've done that we've done it we've cracked it so Kevin Bacon's lying to the board saying we haven't quite cracked this yet he hasn't told any of his colleagues he's going to lie to them. He just does it because he's got the God complex. And they're all thinking, I don't yeah, get this. Yeah, I don't and get this. no, but it's a case of the sort of thing like certain institutes won't, uh, uh, or not really institutes, certain divisions of things and companies and stuff, it, they're getting paid to rectify a problem. But if they rectify that problem, then they don't get paid anymore. Well, this is the point. The point is exactly that. If, if he tells them we fixed we've done it we've got invisibility and we've brought something back visible again they'll cut the funding 
and they'll just say, right, thank you very much for that. We'll sell this yeah, to the army we'll now. This. We're, we're going to use this as we'll a, make a some weapon invisible of soldiers. destruction. Um, so he, being the god, power-hungry god complex man that he is, thinks, he I want to be the first invisible man. You got to imagine, though, if he is the leader of that group of people there, he is, seems to be the head noncho, he's created invisibility and bringing it back. That is massive. That is... He, well, this is it. He wants to be the first changing. invisible man. That is just craziness. Not, but it's not enough for him just to do that and become incredibly rich. He wants to be the first invisible well, man. Well. But he is forced into a corner because the power's being taken out of his hands from the government. He's It's mm. limited time. So he, yeah, he wants to do it. But well, you are well, right as well. He is not. After, they, after the meeting, they confront him and they ask him, what the fuck do you think you're doing? Why don't you just tell them? And he says, because I did this to keep you from being employed. To stop you from being unemployed. And they're like, what do you mean? He's like, well, they would have cut the funding if I'd said we'd done it. Also, I want to be the first. I want to be the first. And it's time for phase three. And they're like, what do you mean phase three? What's phase three? He's like, <laughs> human testing. You'll never get them to agree to that. Yeah, I know. That's why we're not going to tell them about it. So it's all getting a bit off grid now. He's starting to... Where does this invisible dog come into it? Um... Well, there's, we've established there's an invisible dog because he pets it earlier, but later on, when he's angry, he kills it, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love the way, to, uh, way it's quite it's such an easy way to do the invisible process because when they put the goggles on, you just have someone there anyway, and it's their heat sensor, but like the camera the whole time in goggle vision is like, oh, really, they're invisible, but they're not at all. It's such a good way, a cheap way of doing it. Yeah, and apparently Kevin Bacon spent a lot of time either naked or in, like, a latex suit. I think you see his wang at some point. You definitely do. It's a Kevin Bacon film. He, it, he it's generally wang, gets his willy out. It's wang time. <laughs> um, so, um, they, he persuades his colleagues, come on, what I'll do is I'll shift, which is to go visible, I'll shift for three days. That'll give you three days to do all the tests on me that you need to do, and then you can bring me back... Um, and then we can go to the board with our findings and then we can really make some money and then we'll really win all the prizes that there are and become these famous godlike scientists. And they don't really want to do it, but they say, oh, OK, OK, come on then. So he takes one last look in the mirror and he says to himself, see you later. And he strips off. You get to see Bacon's butt at this point. And, uh, and the girls, the girls all sort of look. And he goes, "Come on, ladies, we're all scientists here." He's such a show off again. It's that godlike oh, power. Hang on, before we get it, I've got some weird notes here and stuff. I've got a note which says, "Superman fucks Wonder Woman." What, what is going on? Oh, that's the story. That's a joke he tells. Oh. Do, do you want me to retell it? No, nah, don't worry about it. Um, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because our, okay. our listeners well, will think, it did what throw earth? me because I don't, I don't remember seeing that in this movie. <laughs> no, that didn't happen in the movie, but basically, there's a joke in the movie. Go on, go on. Where um, I think Kevin Bacon tells the joke, and he says, "Superman's flying along, and he looks down, and he sees Wonder Woman sunbathing on the roof of the uh, oh, Justice yeah. Society, and uh, she's lying there completely naked with her legs open." And he thinks, oh, bloody hell, I've always wanted to have sex with Wonder Woman. I could fly down there. And rape her. Yep, I essentially. <laughs> have sex with her in a split second, because I'm Superman, really quickly. And then fly off again. So I, I'll do that now. So he flies down, bang, 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 and he flies off again. Wonder Woman sits up and says, what on earth was that? And the visible man says, I don't know, but my arsehole really hurts. It would be shocking... Uh, to, for that to happen that quickly <laughs> it would be shocking I'll tell you what's shocking is that joke is not aged well has it it, it has contains been. rape sodomy it's just not not a very well aged it's joke not, it's not a good superhero joke in 2023 no but I'm glad you were going <coughs> to that information because it got me to retell a very um, rapey it joke it would be shocking though I'm saying, like, you know, the pain would be very, very quick. Oh, it wouldn't. The pain would would go on. But, I mean... Let's move away from the Invisible Man's bum hole. 
done. And you're like, oh my God. You know. Let's move away from the Invisible Man's bum hole. Let's move back to Kevin Bacon's bum. So they strap him to the bed naked and he says, I have to inject myself, otherwise you're all compliant in this. If it goes wrong... This is what I think you see his wang when he takes his uh, stuff off. Uh, you see his butt and then you... But no, you see you actually see his balls. Oh, uh, maybe that's it. When I they, wasn't when he, really looking. I was. So when he injects himself, um, he starts writhing around and convulsing because it's quite painful as he starts becoming invisible and you do see his balls for a moment um and then his skin starts to vanish and then we see his um his nervous system well he, he start his arm starts getting warm and then he's in like in severe pain and it's just like god that must be like i guess horrible going through your veins like you know yeah yeah and then it all va- it was, gradually he completely vanishes bit by bit until he's completely gone, and then he passes out, hmm. and he's invisible. So seventeen hours later, he's still asleep, but he wakes up and he says, "Oh, the light, the light, Jesus Christ, the light!" And this is where they say, "Well, you haven't got any eyelids, have you?" So, you know, it's going to really hurt your eyes because you can't close them. Um, he gets up and he walks around, and he sort of. He's a bit excited by it. You know, obviously he's invisible. He talks to Josh, Josh Berlin. He talks to Elizabeth Shue. He talks to the rest of the crew. He talks to Elizabeth Shue. He talks to Elizabeth Shue. (laughs) You're made of leather. And I'm made of bacon. You have a heel. Um, He walks around. He's talking to the rest of the science guys. And he's showing signs of weirdness already. He's already sort of, you know... Oh, he's just brushed past me. Oh, he's just tapped me on the shoulder. He's just pinched my ass. He's doing all these things already that you're like, hang on a minute. He's, this guy's only been invisible for a few minutes. He's already up to no good. What's going to happen what, when he realizes what he can really do? What's going on with the really shit uh, uh, digital effects on the eyelids at one point? There's a point he's laying there and his eyelid, uh, eyelid trans, uh, it's just like really transplanted. It's just really bad. I don't, I don't remember that. Yeah. What I do remember, though, is when they put the infrared goggles on, we do see his infrared dick. Brilliant. Swinging around. Um, so, they said, right, well, we're going to have to look after him. We're, we've got three days to monitor him before we bring him back. So, Sarah, the scientist Sarah, she says, well, I'll take the first shift. It's the late shift overnight. And I'll just keep an eye on him. You know, he'll be sleeping mainly. He'll be chilling out. Yeah. So, so she falls asleep. She falls asleep in a chair, doesn't she? So he goes, great, like, uh, the cat is away or asleep. Nice and what play. I'll do is I'll uh, open up her top and feel her boobs. Doesn't a bit of an invisible boob touch? It does. So the, this is like the first thing he does. Yep. Like literally wakes up, he's now like invisible, like, great, I've got my strength back, I'll do anything. The first thing he does go, <sighs> going to touch up them boobs. That is the, that is such a weird thing, I think, personally, for for uh, a first thing to think of. Well, she wakes up and thinks, did that really happen? Did I dream that? I don't know. Am I paranoid because it's the late shift? I'm really not sure. Um, the next day, Josh Brodin's doing some more tests on Kevin Bacon, and um, he sort of is a bit worried because Sarah seems really he's confused because Sarah's suddenly really nervous about him because she doesn't know whether he really did feel her up or really did and even us as the audience were like was that a dream did she dream that happened or because everyone's a bit paranoid now you know what, what's happened we know he's we've established he's a pervert in the first scene we saw him in uh, Janice goes to the toilet but even she's paranoid going for a wee wee, so she has to wear goggles, infrared goggles in there because she's worried that he's in there perving on her. Amazing. So they're all starting to get really paranoid. They all talk about him um, during a meeting. They're all in a room and they're like, what if he misuses the power? And they're like, well, it's only for a few more days. Let's just make sure he's comfortable and happy. We'll get these tests done and then we'll bring him back and that's fine. They're like, yeah, I know, but imagine if you had all that power, what would you do? They're like, yeah, I know, someone could easily go crazy and misuse this power, I know. All right, well, let's all leave the meeting, right? See you later, all right, cool. And they all leave the meeting room. And when they leave the meeting room, we realise there's somebody invisible sat in the chair in the corner that's been listening into this the whole time. 
Yep. Very good. I love it. Absolutely love it. So he starts playing tricks uh, on them. He Elizabeth Shue is doing some stuff with a microscope, and she's got some a can of Coke. And he keeps, her, doesn't he? he keep, well, he keeps moving the can of Coke around, first of all. And uh, then she's like, <laughs> is that you? And he's like, sorry, I just I couldn't resist it. And she's like, okay. And then, yes, he starts rubbing her shoulders. And she's like, get off. And he's like, no, come on, you still like this. She's like, well, not anymore. And then she suddenly has something invisible put in her mouth. And he says, you always say you still like this. And she goes, <sighs> not anymore. He's basically just put his ne- invisible willy in her mouth. He can't. No, it must be a finger. No, it was his willy. <sighs> Come on, it was his willy. I didn't, I didn't notice, but yeah. And then he says to her, Come on, let's make love. Imagine what it would be like making love to an invisible man. It would be quite interesting. <sighs> talk to me. I knew, I knew you would want to talk about this. Hit me. You put me on the spot. I don't know. Um, uh, uh, okay, say if Sarah could go n- invisible for the day, yes, I would be intrigued. Would that mean I could see my willy? I look down and see my willy. It would. It yeah, would. It, you'd see it going up and down. That would be so weird. It would be, wouldn't it? But I, I think it'd, be, we- it'd yeah. be weirder, not weirder for a woman actually, but for the man to be invisible because the woman would lie there and she'd feel it all happening but there'd be nothing to see you know it'd be very it'd be very strange wouldn't it yeah or if she's on top going for it herself yeah and she's like floating like squatting on I think everybody would like just for just for the day you can have your partner but they're invisible I think we answered our question from earlier what would you do if you were invisible for today I think we'd just all have a massive orgy an invisible orgy you don't know you don't know who's who's. You don't have to go with voice. <laughs> Imagine like six invisible people of different sexes all in a room naked, and they're like, "Right, let's have an orgy." Oh, is that you, and Dan? You're, you're just feeling around. You're like, "Oh, what's that? Who's gone up there?" Hey, oh, God, sorry, mate. I thought, sorry, I didn't realise that was you. <laughs> you'd just be like, "Is that a mouse?" You're, that still, an you're still brushing against it. You're still brushing against it. Come on. <laughs> Oh, Kevin Bacon. Um, anyway, back to the movie. She doesn't want to make love to him. And the, next <laughs> After day, all that. the next day is time to deface him and give him the injection to bring him back. I think Bacon has a sex problem. <clears throat> in this film or in real life? In his, his character in this movie. I think he definitely has a, 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 a sexual problem. He's got a problem full stop with power, Gav. He is yeah. in- fiercely intelligent, one of the most probably one of the most intelligent men on the planet. He leads this science group who's he's, he's definitely the cleverest, he's the leader. He also had Elizabeth Shue who's broken up with him and he you know, he doesn't lose. This guy doesn't lose, he's a winner. He'll get her back, whether she likes it or not. There's that. The fact that he's now invisible on top of all of that. Yes, you're right, he's got a problem with power is power is his problem whether that's sex sex problem invisibility science whatever it is sex science and invisibility the new Wu-Tang Clan album coming soon (laughs) so they deface him they inject him Um, we see his heartbeat going crazy Uh, he gets up he runs off he starts collapsing they put him back on the table they have to give him CPR um, and then he just vanishes again, and they couldn't bring him back. They couldn't do it. It worked on the gorilla. Didn't work on Kevin Bacon. I didn't give him a CCR. CCR. Credence Clearwater Revival. No CPR, not CCR. It's a show. Do you think that would have worked instead? Yeah. Ooh, fair enough. Which song? Uh, I see. My I knew it. Moon rising. I know it. The one that you won that talent contest with that time. Yes, yeah, for singing. I can't believe you won that. I mean, I'm so pleased for you. But I can. No one really entered. Yeah. Well, I think it was you and one of your daughters did some cartwheels or something. Yeah. Daisy did gymnastics. <laughs> thing. We were like this really weird family 
in front of just some random people who are just there going, let's go to the talent show. And it's just me and some my kids and that. It's weird. It's very weird. And I want. Well, they couldn't bring him back, so he wakes up later on and they're like, you almost died, Kevin Bacon, you almost died. We'll have to work on the formula. In the meantime, let's make you some skin. So they make this latex stuff that they can pour let's on Let's make him. you a really fucking creepy latex mask. Oh, it's really creepy. They give them some sunglasses because they have to cut the eye holes in it. But it's all great effects. Um, and then they start working on the cure and... It's great now because he's he's ill and he's he's I think it's been ten days now and he's still invisible. He throws up and he's thrown up this invisible sick. So now we know in this this film, if invisible you're sick, jizz. it's invisible. You're probably invisible jizz, probably invisible poo. Um, and he's losing it. He wants to go out for a drive. They don't put any nose holes in the mask. It's really weird. Any nostril holes? Yeah. No, they don't. That stops him from doing loads of cocaine, probably. Maybe it's a cocaine deterrent. So he says, fuck this, I'm going for a drive. So he, he goes off in a baseball cap, and the security guard's like, oh, I didn't see you there. I, like, well, I haven't seen you for a while. And he's like, yep, yeah, see you later. He gets in his convertible. Scares the fuck out of a kid. Oh, that's brilliant. Those kids are, like, sticking their no, that tongues out, and he just leans over and opens his mouth. And, of course, because he's invisible, inside the mouth is just this empty space. Very scary. I'd do that. Scary children. Yeah. Little shits. Um, and then Josh and Elizabeth Shue, they start looking for him because they realise he's gone. Yep. He goes home. Back to his own house, Kevin Bacon. He wants to eat something. But then, he remembers... <sighs> He's got a neighbour that he has a fancy. He's got a sexy neighbour across so the way. he gets naked and goes to see her. Fuck's sake. He says to himself out loud, Who's gonna know? Who's gonna know? I think she'll fucking know, Kev. It's literally like a sort of person, like, if you, you know, you do anything you want and get away with it, go for it. And he's like, great, rape. So she gets in the shower... She's having a good time. I've met her, don't forget. It's a very beautiful one. Doorbell rings. She has a look. There's no one there. She opens the door. And then we get Kev's point of view. Because obviously he's invisible. Sneaks in. She's just in a little tiny towel dripping wet from the shower. And he sneaks in next to her. Just sneaks in there. And it, it, uh, it, I love the way it really very subtly turns into, like, you know, a camera's POV beginning of Michael Myers' uh, Halloween. Michael exactly. Myers, uh, yep. It very sneakily just turns into his foot at the moment. All of a sudden you're like, oh, great, we're in his point of view now. It's really nicely done. Yeah, it is. And it does, subtle. at this point, it switches to, well, not a slasher, but it certainly switches to more horror now at but, this point. But it's great. It goes past the mirror, looks the mirror, and it's not there. It's brilliant. Yeah. Paul Verhoeven, great director. Very good at directing um, tension, well, just, violence. Just explaining what's horror. going on as well. It was great. Um, so she, obviously, she's on her own. And like most people would be, she's naked. She's sat in front of a mirror. She's just had a shower. She's brushing her hair. She's putting moisturizer on. The mirror keeps moving around. It's on a hinge. She's like, this is very strange. I don't know why this is happening. She then gets pushed to the bed. And... Um, that's all we kind of see of that scene. We can guess what so happens next. The first thing he thinks of when he wakes up, brilliant, I'm going to touch that woman's booze right now. That is literally not like, oh, God, I could do with a poop. Not, not generally, I'm hungry. Uh, first thing, breasts, I'm going to touch them up now. Second thing, I'm scaring these children. Third thing, raping a woman. Wow. Well, to be fair, he does go to his fridge first and get some food out. Then but he that's sees not the a naked power woman. visibility, though, is it? No. I'm saying visibility. Touches up a woman, scares children, rapes women. Well, Elizabeth's shoes hot on his heels. She goes to his flat. She's still got a key. And she goes into his apartment and she finds the mask on the floor. It's she, great when she throws water in his face. It is good. So good. Yeah. He goes home and he, he um, she washes her face uh, in the, and yeah we see the special effects been splashed on his face and the team say he's on the, he's out somewhere let's get some goggles get some tranks 
and we need to get get him and we need to bring him down and you know, contain him. But he comes back in at that point. Yeah, sneaks in, doesn't he? And he's like, what, what's the matter? What are you guys up to? And there's a great moment here with a fly. Obviously, the fly can't see him and he just catches the fly because, you know, a fly would is too quick for our hands because these two big meaty hands are coming out of fly. But when you're invisible, you can just catch it because it can't see you. And he admits... I like messing with people. I've got to be honest, guys. I'm really enjoying the aspects of this that I can go around messing with people. By messing, he means raping. Yeah, yeah, that's that's just my old word. Funny enough, though, you do get people like serial killers and stuff like that will just be like nonchalant, mild words for terrible, terrible things. I just I just messed with a train. You mean you derailed it? Wow. Yeah. You, you say derailed, it, it, I, I say uh, mischief. Uh, using that takes off uh, a sense of it, it was them, uh, uh, their fault. It takes off the blame slightly. So he's unhinged at this point. And the, the whole science team are like, we need to bring him back. Not just for him. 95% but... of the compound. So they're 5% off the, the compound. Of it... Getting it. Uh, and he's there eating a Twinkie. How does he breathe? If he's got no nostril, uh, no, no nasal holes, I don't know. These are the things that concern you, and he's just raped a woman. That was a concern of mine, actually, when I watched it. Well, later on, Elizabeth Shue is in bed. It's a beautiful woman, barely got any clothes on. She's got a little sheet over her. Yeah, she's and this, she? this sheet starts being moved off of her while she sleeps, and then her panties start being taken down. Uh, she wakes up, the phone's ringing, and was that a dream? Was that not? Again, that's a does dream. a great... Because no, she's freaked out by the fact that he's invisible, that's why. And this is it, and I love that. Like that scene earlier with Sarah in the lab, when her boob gets felt, you're like, is this a dream, or is, this, is everybody just paranoid? It does a good job of... You do wonder, you know, was it a dream or was it not? Now, yes, you're right, it was a dream, well, in my opinion, in your opinion, anyway. Um, but yeah, the phone, Josh thinks he's fixed it he says i think i've got the cure um the tensions are really high um kevin wants to go out at this point to explore his gift his gift yeah so he fixes a camera to repeat a loop of him sleeping the cctv camera so we can go out and about oh here we go he goes out he scares a tramp He he hacks the camera doesn't he he does. He goes out and he scares a tramp or he a homeless He kills man. the invisible dog, first of all. Oh, that poor doggy. Breaks his neck. He spies on Elizabeth again and he sees that her and Doss Brolin are banging. And he is very angry about this. Very angry about this. Pissed off, in fact. He smashes the window. And they're paranoid because they know he's invisible. So they start looking around going, oh, God, do you think that was him? Could be. Did he think he's seen us? I'm not sure. Yeah, he gets back and this is where he kills the dog. So he's not just a rapist, he's a dog killer. Hmm. He, he's he's it, not going to go down well in many circles. That is too too far. That is two bad ticks you don't want on your resume. Right. Absolutely. Um, so they realise he's tricked the cameras, he's hacked the cameras, and the whole team are very angry now. He's actually secretly spying on them all. And Josh and Elizabeth go and see the committee and they tell them the truth. They say, look, this is what's happened. You know, we're going to... He is... Well, actually, they go to the guy, the old guy, in the middle of the night, and they say, we have done it. We just can't bring people back yet. But Kevin Bacon has fucking injected himself and he's out there somewhere invisible. So... Uh, and he's just like you fucking idiots basically yeah um, he's like okay leave this with me i'll see what i can do and he's about to make a phone call and all of a sudden the lines cut mm-hmm. that's not good and he goes out in his garden and he gets shoved in his swimming pool yep. and there's a great scene now where he's drowned by an invisible naked kevin bacon Indeed. the way the way he looks underwater is great effects isn't it I love the fact he's standing there, though, just before it happened, smoking a cigar, and the smoke shows Kevin Bacon's face. Yeah, it's really good. 
gritty. That, stuff that was the water. Like that. They figured out ways to just sort of show him. Yeah. And it's, it looks okay. It's not that bad. Because less, because less is more like like we always say, and yeah. um, it's just a split second. If they'd have done it for ages, it wouldn't have looked as good. But uh, a split but, second but of blowing out some cigarette smoke. But you're right. He drowns him. He drowns him. He drowns him in the pool. Um, and then he runs off, and he's back at the lab. And the effects are still pretty good. They find out that Dr. Kramer's dead. Obviously, Kevin's just killed him. Then the phone lines get cut. Uh, Kevin Bacon's messed with the security system. He traps everybody in the lab. So everybody gets the goggles, and he starts taking people out. He kills Janice. He says, um, I can't let you guys turn me in. I've got so much power, so much freedom. It's amazing what you can do when you don't have to look at yourself in the mirror. That line is incredible. It's amazing what you can do when you don't have to look at yourself in the mirror. Because mm-hmm. you don't have to face yourself, what you've just done or, to or, someone. Or just if you don't think you uh, uh, look the part. Yeah. It's great. They find Janice's body. He's shoved her in a locker. Um... And he admits to killing Dr. Kramer in the water as well. He's drowned him as well. And they say, well, let's take him down. Yeah, that's so, the plan. Let's take him down, basically. You know, we sort of go on into the third act. So Predator Vision. Um, and, you know, they've all got their goggles on. Now we get some more sneaky ways of showing him here with his steam coming out the pipes, don't we? Yeah. Throwing um, blood all over the floor. Yeah, it. she splits some bl- blood packs. Yeah. And sp- throws them everywhere so and she throws it on his face it's such as well. a Paul Verhoeven thing just blood everywhere for no reason just blood everywhere he's like somebody was it's probably in the script you know paint and he's like no it has to be blood <laughs> she throws, oh, bl- on, she throws blood. blood on him because he's there she does. Yeah. and it looks great uh, he, and he starts killing people well, he looks a bit like Frank almost it kills Carter as well um, and Josh uses the fire extinguisher to create, obviously, so that he can see him with the smoke everywhere. Kevin admits he knows about the affair. And they, they have a bit of a scrap. Elizabeth, uh, she... What does she do? She hits him or something? I can't remember what she does now. She stabs him, I think. Blood goes everywhere, like you mentioned. And they're looking for the bloody footsteps. He breaks Sarah's neck. So he, he literally kills pretty much the entire science team and a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He syringes her, then breaks her neck. Yep. He impales Frank. He even stabs Josh Brolin. Um, he locks um, Elizabeth Josh, lo- Josh and Elizabeth Shue in the, the lab. And the temperature starts dropping down. Then he puts the mask back on. I love uh, the fact that she makes an electric magnet. She's badass. And it was powerful enough to do the handle on the outside and open the doors. So good. Because she wonder what she's doing initially, and then she realised she's built a really powerful magnet that can open the handle from through a very thick door. So clever. Um, and meanwhile, Josh is sort of dying inside, you know, because he's been stabbed. Yeah. But yeah, then she creates a bomb as well. Well, Bacon plans on blowing the lab. Bacon plans on growing the lab, blowing the lab, blowing the lab. like that. Uh, they they have a good scrap. The water comes on the sprinklers. Um, he puts his foot on her throat. So he's again, he's naked. Apparently, it was quite hard to film these scenes because well, Kevin Bacon was naked in a green, like Charlie from yeah, you know, the Green Man. That's like a green suit. That's what I said. Yeah, she um she actually sets him on fire at one point. She, Yes, because his skin starts burning, doesn't it? Yeah, but parts of him start falling off, but then a splinter hit comes into effect. Uh, but at that point, Broden comes in and hits him. So it's all these sort of little misdirects. Very, very like the classic story. You know, you know what's going to happen. Uh, now, as much as I love this movie, I do feel like the ending um, does go on a little bit too long. Mm-hmm. Um, they have this scrap now in the elevator shaft. He gets uh, sure. a crowbar, electrocutes him because um, it's connected to the electricity wires. Um, yeah, it's like, when did he turn into a Terminator? It's just a little bit too long. I could have done with a couple of minutes shaved off of this. He starts reappearing again, and then they, he realises he yeah. set a bomb. My note actually says, like, in, uh, sort of, you know, we're on an action movie now, basically. Yeah, totally is. Um, they managed to escape the lift shaft, then it explodes. Shaft. 
Shaft. <laughs> Who's the man when... I don't know what the words are. Uh, why, why, why did I do that in Flash Gordon? Shaft. Flash. He, he's uh, one of us. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Shaft. He'll save every one of us. That'd be weird, wouldn't it? Flash it Shaft. Be. I'd love it. Uh, flash if, Shaft. <clears throat> it's not a good if name. If Isaac Hayes turned up on Ming the Merciless's Merciless planet. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Instead of Brian Blessed. <laughs> So it's Isaac Hayes. <laughs> okay, or whatever he says. <laughs> um, lift explodes, boom. Um, flies up, almost hits them. Kevin's still alive. He grabs her leg. Then they fall into the lift. And he says to her, One last kiss. <laughs> no. You've, no you're, like, you're a rapist, a pervert, a dog killer, a murderer... And your skin's all lagging off because you've been burnt. Yeah, and and I don't. I already have a boyfriend. You're so like so full on. So they drop him into the flaming shif- lift shaft, and that's the end. Shaft. He'll save every one of us. And, and it's just emergency services at the end, and that's it. That's your lot. But you still wonder at the end. Now I didn't even have to ask you. Do you recommend? Oh, absolutely. Uh, no, an invisible man, and we didn't say that. I think because, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, sorry. Do yes. you recommend this then? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's probably <laughs> it's not a lot of choice, really. Although there's a lot of invisible movies, these two are the best two that we've covered. Okay. I think I think the Invisible Man movie recently that came out is very good, but Hollow Man is just. Perfectly encapsulates that late nineties, early two thousands special effects where they weren't pushing it too much. They could have fucked this up yeah. if they'd pushed it too much. But it's just about enough. And it's Kevin Bacon, and it's it's nasty enough because it's Paul Verhoeven. It's nasty enough. You know what I mean? It, what makes this too, film is that it's, it's a bit too nasty. In that, it, that's yeah? it. It's funny enough. Like he, he's very over the top visually with his movies. Think like, um, uh, what's that one of the uh, space aliens and the shooting them? The, the Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers. Yeah, that's you amazing. know, and, and Robocop is very full on his gore. Basic Instinct, not so much. Total um, Recall reserves it back. Total Recall bit, um, but this though it is the horribleness and the h- harshness of it is in the Kieran Bacon's horrible performance. Character. Yeah, you know the fact that he kills a dog. dog. You know, he it's rapes. Not, he rapes a girl. He's um, not he feels people up. There's a dick in a mouth. You know, it's all very nasty stuff. And actually, you've just reminded me. This is our fourth Paul Verhoeven film. Amazing, because we've covered Basic Instinct, Total Recall. Robocop and now this. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, and and you want to do Starship Troopers at some point? Probably do. Yeah, it's a bloody good movie. Um, yeah. But yeah, I absolutely recommend this. I absolutely recommend the last one. You know, I think. Yeah, I recommend it if you've not seen it. Yeah. Great, great double bill. But it's a good both, late nineties sort of thrillery horror thriller. Both similar in a way that um, very nasty films. Like they're not. They're funny, but they're also like really. Even for 1933, The Invisible Man has got a real nasty streak to it. He's yeah. not a nice guy, and he does some horrible things. And he very he very quickly escalates. Like you said, he suddenly starts taking trains out and people off cliffs. And the same in this one. He goes from pinching a few people's butts and feeling someone's boob to full-on rape, dog murder. And then, you know, he starts taking out his entire science team and then creates a bomb. It's like, okay, wow. Yeah, it's just uh, the power thing. It escalates so much because you're just so like you know, it's such an ego trip. No one can see me. I can do what I like. Crazy, but yeah, highly recommend it. If you haven't seen it, I don't I'm sure highly recommend it. I recommend it. Fair enough. Fair enough. What are you, I love it. Danny, two two times. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> baby, baby. All right, then, uh, let's get out of here and do the outro. Okay, the outro, outro. Let's do it, do it. You ready, ready? All right, let's go. Go, go.
And we're back again. Back again to say goodbye, baby bitch. <laughs> what was more? I don't know. That, that was it. That was episode 137. 137. Thanks, thanks for coming along with the ride with us, ladies and gentlemen, ghouls, non gender people, space aliens, werewolves, zombies. And invisible people. Uh, yeah, amazing uh, to talk about these two. Hollow Man is a cheeky little, you know, um, I, I just love it. It's one of those ones that you kind of like. It's a guilty pleasure, I guess, but it's not a guilty pleasure. It and is, Invisible is, Man is it, just a classic. It's in there with the late nineties films with your American Wealth in Paris and stuff like that. Oh, it's not as good as that. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's dope. And um, Invisible Man is just a classic. And like I said, it's in my top three Universal. It sounds like it's in your top three Universal movies as well. James Whale is a fantastic and amazing director. What a legend! Just a great movie. That's that is like a that needs to go in a museum that movie that's just so so good it needs to be preserved and looked after yes. so there we go that was 137 um, well we better talk about what's coming up next it's been a while so we've had to change a few little bits around uh, but I am very excited Gav because next episode episode 138 we're keeping it summer and we're going to go camping in the woods amazing you know where we're going to go camping, I know and I'm so excited we're going to go to Crystal Lake. Yes. And we're going to cover, because we've already covered the first one, so we're going to cover Friday the 13th, part two and three. That's so cool. Now, you don't have to watch it in 3D, but you can if you want. We tried. Uh, I'm not doing my 3D I think copy. I got a migraine within about 40 minutes of watching it. I'm just going to watch my Blu-ray box set because they're really nice. I did think of recently selling my uh, DVD box set, which is signed by Kane Hodder. Put it on oh. eBay. I might do. I'm not sure. Interesting. Mm. Well, that's what we're doing for the next episode, 138. Friday the 13th, 2 and 3. And then as long as things keep ticking along nicely, that means episode 139 will be a long-awaited patron pick. Um, and I may have announced this on the last episode, but I can't remember, but sorry if we did already. But it's Holly Mitchell. Holly, you've picked for us Cell with John Cusack Samuel L. Jackson the Stephen King which I've not seen uh, before which you've not seen and also a movie called Razorblade Smile which I've not seen before about a vampire being hunted by a, um, uh, a British policeman Scotland Yard policeman so sounds good it, it, I might it, both it, Holly these. it sounds interesting I look forward to uh, uh, putting them into my eyeballs get them right in your eyeballs my friend so that's 138 139 and then 140 we're tackling the first couple of episodes arguably the best couple of episodes of a franchise Final Destination 1 and 2 amazing because again we're at that that time late 90s early 2000s where we had some sneaky little good horrors come in Final Destination 1 and 2 cannot wait to discuss those with you no, I can't wait to talk about those films. So that's what we're up to next. And there could be just good conversations because then we could do the synopsis of like, like ideas of us dying and cheating it and we can have some good conversations. It, well, those films made me paranoid about what could kill me in my own home. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you could literally just be making a fried egg and if you and if you do two three things wrong they could lead to this to this to this to this and then that it's, could... it, no those movies are great because it did make that conversation if you were at school well, I don't know if I, I wasn't at that point but you, it could have been the playground thing god what if this had happened and you know yeah yeah totally you know you could die by anything you um, could but there we go so yeah uh, 139 138 39 and 40 that's our next three episodes that we've got coming up thank you everybody as always um for your patience sorry we, we had and, a couple uh, of months off there and respect to uh, uh, rest in peace to boz uh, yes and this episode being dedicated to him as well big love boz we hope you did you proud uh we tried to keep it as positive as possible um didn't bother talking about any shit films we talked about only the good films we've watched and um we got to be a grumpy old man a little bit which sometimes you like to be as well but we're we're grumpier than you would ever be but yes much love to boz <laughs> big kisses and uh well i guess we i should do some admin and then we'll say our goodbyes yeah how does that how does that feel does that feel right to you do it do it do it now okay well as always we are a proud 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 member of legion podcast network um 
you can find out more about them on legionpodcasts.com uh, you can go to Facebook uh, and you can search for a Legion Podcasts uh, Facebook page you can also search for our Facebook page which is just the podcast on Haunted Hill. That's where we're most active. Um, and that's where we have our weird family community of crazy people, supporters, friends, family, listeners. And you can just get involved in that, get chatting to people, tell us what you're watching, what you want to watch, what you do like, what you don't like, and all the other stuff in between. Um, you can also post weird and wonderful things like World of the Strange and all that shit on there. It's great. Um, if you want to contact us, we've got an email address, which is the podcast on Haunted Hill at Outlook.com. Um, that's where you can email us, tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, any other questions you might have. You can also message me or Gav on Facebook, but probably best message me because Gav's not always on there. Um, wherever you listen to us now is where you can continue to find us for the most part, but we are also on Spotify, YouTube, Podknife, Apple Casts, Podcast Addict, and many other places as well. If you just Google the podcast on Haunted Hill, you'll find us. There is another podcast out there called The Homos on Haunted Hill. A couple of gay guys who do a podcast as well. Got started a few years after ours. Um, listen we, to that we, one too. But. We actually thought when we first saw it, it was a, like some. Uh, is that like. Is, is that like a mock on us or something? We were really, yeah, really, strange, really confused. It? And then, like, oh, it's actually it's a separate podcast. Like, okay, fine. Well, weirdly, Kate Pollock sent me a link to it uh, about a week ago and said, do you know about this? And I said to her, yeah, yeah it's been going for a good sort of seven, eight years, I think. Um, it's do not anything to release, do with us. But are they still releasing episodes? I think they are. I oh, think they brilliant. are still releasing, yeah. <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I might as well give them a shout-out, the homos on Haunted Hill as well. I've never heard the show, but yeah. It. Yeah, me neither. Um, but, yes, uh, we're also available on Twitter. Just go at Haunted Podcast and Instagram, the podcast on Haunted Hill. Insta, we mentioned Star Wars Sanctuary Moon, and that's part of the Deadbolt Films thing that we've got going on, our little production company. Find out more at deadboltfilms.com. We have a YouTube channel, which is just Deadbolt Films, and uh, Instagram is Deadbolt Films. Twitter is at Deadbolt Films. You can find out more about the short movies, the uh, features, a uh, couple of comic books, uh, and, you know, this podcast. Um, talking of podcasts, we both do other podcasts. We cheat on each other a little bit. Gav? High Strangeness Podcast. It's quite uh, legit, because you are cheating on me with your actual partner so that's fine yes it is it is it is my partner indeed and uh, my partner in crime a uh, true crime <laughs> oh um, i like that that's, that was good very good i know and uh, uh sarah and i uh, we we do strange things kind of like dan and i's world of strange really because it's not just true crime we do weird things as well um but yeah sarah and i and um she bless her does some great research and i'm useless um and uh, uh just talk nonsense but yeah if you watch it recently covered the devil's footprints which happened in devon about 150 years ago yeah um pretty interesting but a lot of you will remember that from those sort of coffee table books um but and yeah you, you also do one don't you i do yeah i was just gonna say you also mainly cover true crime but you do other sometimes supernatural stuff i do something as well with our buddy rj mccready our show is called blame it on the aliens podcast and it's uh, around conspiracies, things like the moon landing, but also we look at things like Bigfoot, the Bermuda Triangle, uh, Men in Black, all these kind of things. And we always try and tie them back to, could this be something to do with aliens? That's a bit of a joke. Sometimes we do believe it could be. Sometimes we just think it's a man with a camera in a field, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, that's Blame It on the Aliens podcast. We are on a little... Well, we were on hiatus because I was ill, but we're back now, and our next episode, we are going to be looking at real-life vampires and the origins of... So, you know, you find out these nice. mass mass graves. There was one recently found um, somewhere in Europe, a mass grave of people that all had stakes in the chest and coins in their eyeballs. There's only what There's only one reason... The, the what, whole skeleton, skeleton. Skeletons, yeah, yeah, hundreds of years old. But, you know, so there's this legend of vampires. So, yeah, we're going to be talking about that kind of stuff. So that's exciting. Um, and then finally, uh, I just want to thank our patrons, um, as always. Um, Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you ever so much, patrons. Yeah, and thank you for sticking with us when we d d d can't 
life just uh, uh, throws a curveball at us. We can't. Yeah, do it. we really really appreciate but, that. Guys. Like Dan had no voice, we literally couldn't do it. <laughs> I could, I could, I did a little video cast for you patrons. Uh, you did, if you haven't yeah. checked it out, it's only ten minutes long, but it's me just talking about a few movies. Um, if you want to become a patron, just go to Patreon, search for the podcast on Haunted Hill. If you can't find it, email or message me. Um, you don't have to do it, but if you want to donate even as little as a pound or a dollar a month, it all a, helps us. There's quite a lot of content on there. Um, I always uh, make these little videos every once in a while. Yeah, that we've released um, a lot of bonus episodes. Not as many le- lately, but a lot of bonus episodes initially. Some video episodes from Gav. Don't worry, he's dressed in them all. Um, and... We also, every single Friday, or as I call it, Freaky Friday, I turn back the clock and I'm releasing our old episodes. So far, I've been doing it for 88 weeks now. So eight, episode 89 will be dropping this next Friday. So whenever you're listening to this. So every Friday, you will get an old episode for those newer listeners that have never heard the old episodes. So they're all getting released um, as well. Um, yeah, lots of random crap on there. You also, if you become a patron, get a T-shirt in one of three colors in your size to support us. We're talking about doing some mugs again soon. We did some with our old logo. We might be doing that again soon. So we'll let you know uh, about that um and yeah just jump on there and become a patron like i said if you can't find it let me know but as always want to give a shout out to our patrons yeah thank you very Um, much you do get a patron pick obviously i was gonna say the the big thing you will get is every three episodes in order one of our patrons gets to pick the two films so you'd get to choose something uh, one of your favorite films we can talk we'll talk about yeah, or two of your favourite films, two whatever it is. Favorite. It's it's made for some really interesting conversations, um, stuff that we never thought we'd really talk about. So it's gonna it's fun. Um, so yeah, if you want to do that, please do, and you will get a shout out like I'm about to do for these guys. And I know, um, I think it was Don who liked me to do the uh, or Kevin wanted me to do the individual Don, voices for each of you. Do, do let Dan know if you got the T-shirt. <laughs> Oh, yes, let us know if you've got the T-shirt, Don, because uh, we had a lot of trouble getting that sent over to you for some reason, and I have no idea why. Um, uh, they weren't accepting uh, 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 packages to, to, to America for some reason. They went in there, and I was like, oh, can I post this now? She's like, yeah, of course. I, like, I was like some sort of crazed lunatic, and I was like, well, hang on, from, every from time I've been able to, yeah, yeah, every yeah. time I've not been able to, so don't look at me like that. <laughs> So hopefully, Don, you'll get your T-shirt. and well, um, should have had it by now, I hope, yeah. And if you do uh, want to send me a photo of you in it, I'll put it up on the on the social medias so people can see how amazing and handsome you'll look in that T-shirt. Who knows? But you don't have to. But yeah, as always, here's the shout-outs to our patrons. So thank you ever so much to... Don Collier. Yeah. Matthew Godley. Whoa. Jamie Jenkins, <sighs> Kevin S. Five, five, five. Sarah K. Rachel. R. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie McCready. <laughs> and le- 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 Lex. Boo, 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 boo. So there we go. And that's Lex Boo is Holly Mitchell. So, Holly, you're you're going to be our next patron in two episodes' time. And then, yeah, brilliant. So that's it, guys. That was episode 137. That was our return after two months off. My voice has just about made it through. Yep. <clears throat> and we're and, back, to, uh, uh, back to a bit of a... I mean, yeah, we'll probably get one out again soon. It probably won't be too bad, will it? No, it should be fine. We'll um, we'll do our Jason two and three episode very soon. Oh, that's what I need to watch now. Yep. Oh, Get that so watched in the next week or so. I can't. It's that weather. It's very hot here in the UK. At I the know. I, I, I watched. Um, I've got the Jules last night. Oh, brilliant! I've got a day off tomorrow. Um, I could do one. I'm gonna be doing Burbs soon. Yeah. Got, yeah. Got the Burbs. I did the Lost Boys uh, a couple of weeks back. It's yeah. these ones you watch when you it's need hot. Like Fright Night, that sort of thing. Uh, Fright Night, Texas Chainsaw Massacre as well. Always yeah, got that up there. Yeah. Tremors or something like that, maybe. Yeah, stuff where you can just see the sweat. Australia, the Australian spaces. films are quite like as well. You know, your balls, your things like that. We could watch um, We Can Fright together. Oh, God. That, that's a traumatising movie. Hot. Very hot. Another film like that when you talk to is uh, The Sorcerer. Got to talk about that sometime. Fucking hell, that's crazy, that one. 
Mm. That's the one with the, that's the, one with the truck, jungle, isn't it? Truck, truck full of dynamite going through a jungle. Yeah. Keeping it steady on sand in the truck. I can't believe we've covered um, uh, Deliverance, you know? Yeah. That was a tough, tough review, that was. <laughs> you know, that, that boy doesn't play the guitar. What does he do? That's no, another kid putting his hands through the guitar playing it. Is that because he broke his banjo string? No, it's because he couldn't do it. I'm not surprised. I mean, take a look at him. He doesn't look like he could do a lot. I think that's right. Anyway. It's a bit like, bit like David Bowie in uh, Labyrinth. That wasn't him doing all that stuff with his balls. That was somebody else's hand coming around from behind him and playing with them. It's someone was giving him a reach around playing with his balls. Yeah. Brilliant. He was a German magician. Um, he was very good with his well, hands. If someone's going to be good with their hands and play with my <laughs> balls, I want it to be a German mag- magician. If you ever want to reach around, <laughs> pick a German magician. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And make sure they're played by Christoph Waltz. <laughs> I love to an impression. Oh, okay, there you go. I've come to play with your balls. <laughs> Just turn around. So there we go. All right, guys. Thank you ever so much. We thank love you. you very, very much. Um, it's a good night from something that I can't see, but it's near the corner of my mouth. It's a yeah, yeah. It's a good night from bacon's pervy perviness. It's a good night from the baby in the pram that I've just kicked over because I'm invisible and I'm a lunatic. Yeah, and it's a good night from you. And it's a good night from Elizabeth Shue. <laughs> it rhymed. And me. And the invisible and poo. 